Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <clears throat> Using the fancy snowball mic again. Oh, yeah. You bet I am. In the downstairs room where the most l loudest thing here is the fan in the background, the dog's outside of this uh, room. Yep. <laughs> so, uh... Anyway, first let me give you life and everyone who uh, uh, comes in here first life. Uh, <clears throat> Hello everyone and welcome to this month's KWCC. I am your host, Kaiju X, and with me at this immediate moment is uh, Ghidorah will die by Ligma. What is Ligma? Don't ask. Otherwise also known as your friend Trashy Verifier, Alex Williams. Hello. And I'm using the awesome snowball mic, so now I don't sound like shit. So am I! <laughs> oh, you're using a snowball, huh? Yeah, yeah well, you never knew that? No, I, uh, no, I, that's what I have. It's, uh... Yeah. Really good mic, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, blue snowball. That's what, yeah. And it has, the different settings are great, especially when it comes to, like, the... You have a more surrounding, like, an audio base, so they're, like, a podcast with multiple people. You can switch it from, like, one person to three people. Like, it's great. Yeah. Wait, Really? Yeah, that's the on the back of it. There's one, two, three. Each one has different settings for like group audio, single audio, things like that. Oh my god, are you kidding me? On the back of the mic? Huh. Yeah, because it's like a three. It, it's like a trilopod, right? It's like three tripod. prongs. Or, yeah, tripod. And on the back, there's like a little thing. It's like one, two, three, and you can move it back and forth. Oh my goodness, I I'm got to play around with that later. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I think one is single person, three is group. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but right, and two is something else. And here we have our beloved leader, Grayshot, whom boo, <laughs> boo, yeah, <laughs> giving out that uh, in-depth mic knowledge as I try to do. Yes, it's the only thing he's good for, really. How <laughs> <laughs> <Not> wrong? <laughs> uh... But yeah, I'm sure more people will come in and, you know, we'll have fun and blah, blah, blah. So I ran a little late. Granted, the people listening to this don't really care. But I ran a little late just because my brother was like, hey, do you want to watch Gridman? I was like, it's good. It's practically going to be a little late. So I was like, but all right. <laughs> good episode. Wait, wait, what show? SSS, uh, SSSS Gridman. It's a, like a new uh, anime. It's a new anime show based on uh, like older material. It, it's basically like an Ultraman show. It's it's pretty good actually. Ah, okay. And okay. you just lost my interest. Oh no no! Check it out. It's actually re it, it's not just it's it's got an overarching story to it, it's filled with a lot of interesting mysteries that uh, honor the the original source material. So it's. Yeah, it's actually kind of it's actually kind of interesting. I like it. Very neat. Yeah, cu currently when it comes to uh, shows, I just uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine and Daredevil season three have been my hot topic so far. I've just I watched Daredevil season three. So good. It it was. I don't think it's better than one. But I, I oh really one is still the best season. Yeah, 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 but I, I still enjoy it. I, th I thought it was better than two, but I will say, I think in regards to side characters, Elektra is still, like, one of my favorite characters from, like, the whole Marvel TV series. Same. Yeah, she was really good. She, she was. Oh, yeah, and they canceled Luke Cage and Iron Fist. I uh, would shed a, I would have shed a which tear. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, I shed a tear, but only because I was crying in celebration, because, God, I, Luke Cage is good. <laughs> Luke Cage was good, but Iron Fist. Oh, I, oh, I, I, I actually Fist. thought the second season was pretty good. Really? Uh, yeah, I thought it, it's it's at least way better than first. You have to. Oh, I never saw it. I, I never. Oh, saw you it. never saw? It? I, oh, the I second heard... season's pretty decent. Yeah. Oh, honestly, I, I, I just heard I, bad things. Like I heard it was like, oh yeah, season two. I'm like, oh god. No, it, it gets rid of the whole business aspect that was in the first season. It just focuses on, on Danny Rand and Davos, like. The whole martial arts aspect. Oh. It's only ten. Ep it's only ten episodes. It's not thirteen. Oh, even okay. You just sold. You just sold me on that. 
because I still need to watch Luke Cage season two because I liked the first half of season one. The second half kind of died. Yeah. But uh, season two is way better all around. Okay, I'll check them out because the other reason is apparently they've combined for like a tag team show, like Heroes for Hire or something. Yeah, that's kind of the theory. I Which hope that I happens. Would, yeah, because I think the two are kind of bland by themselves but working off each other i think they can have some interesting conflict because that was one of my favorite part of the defenders which was him and iron fist and then jessica jones and daredevil those two just were again it's it, it really matches the physicality of one group and the intelligence of the other that that's kind of my problem with defenders only two of them really have a purpose being there the other two were just thrown in that's kind of one of the reasons why i didn't really care for defenders yeah, I, I'm not saying Defenders is good. In any case, we need to talk. Or this is the KWCC. Let's jump back into the KWCC. Uh, so what? Um... KWC has been bought by Netflix. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be the day? Uh, please, do you think Andrew would be here if they were bought by Netflix? He'd be he'd be sailing on his yacht if he were bought by oh, Netflix. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, granted. No, I unfortunately can't take credit for that because Alex, or not Alex, uh, I wish it was Alex, but uh, no, Tyler will be the one to sell the KWC to Netflix, and he would be sailing on his yacht in the middle of the Atlantic or Pacific or uh, Indian Oceans. You forget that I control all the strings. Oh yeah, you're right. Oh, never mind, Alex gets to ride on that yacht then. <laughs> oh, actually, just so, I guess we should just start off with a kind of a mini announcement, but... Speaking of people that have done uh, fantastic jobs and whatnot, uh, we have two new additions to the KWC. Uh, so, in regards to editors, uh, longtime contributor uh, Birdman is going to be coming our second editor, and then we also have uh, Harley becoming our newest verifier. Mm -hmm. Which uh, major round of applause for those two? Both are ex, are, both are excellent uh kwc writers in their own right and i am totally happy and excited to have them on the team mm -hmm, and thank absolutely. you to uh yeah th and thank you to a major thanks to kaiju x and a little bit gbj for uh helping uh get that wheel in motion and uh getting those uh new verifiers and new editor on board oh, right for if, sure, for if, sure. if the two of you are listening to this you could do better Please. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be honest right now. Where would they go? Anywhere but here. I mean, you're not wrong, but you know, we're just gonna, <laughs> until they realize that, we're just gonna, you know, have them edit and continue to write some fantastic matches. We'll work them to death, run them to the ground. I'm just kidding. <laughs> While we sit back on our yachts. <laughs> the three of us on the yacht. And the gray shot just has his own compartment to himself. <laughs> we call it the tasteful room. <laughs> but yeah, oh, if we're gonna. Or gray shot could do four hours. Please, I'm not that rich, but I mean, I did actually. I did. I was saving up for quite a while, and I was finally able to get the uh, PS4. So my brother's diving into Red Dead. I'm diving into. Uh, I'm. I. I've, I've downloaded Spider Man. I cannot wait to jump into it. I'm so excited. I love Spider-Man 2. I hear this is the best one since, or if not better. Oh, the, the PS4 Spider-Man? I hear that one's really good. Yes! Ah. Uh, but, uh, oh, and, tangents aside, uh, do you guys want to dive into the first KWC? Yes, absolutely. We will dive oh. into this month's... You, we'll deal with the... Uh, uh, Alex, whatever your name is. <laughs> you, person... <laughs> Uh, but yes, our first KWC of the month is the finale to the Godzilla. Or no, actually, no, 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 no. it's two... one forty or two forty, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's uh two forty and two two forty one. So well, we'll call it the finale since it's the better match. Oh really? Oh, uh, just <laughs> well, it is better, but the other one's still good. Right. Okay, fair enough. Except for one part, which we'll get into. All right, well, or get into when we get there. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, to, this match we'll be going over, going over right now is Match 240, written by me and Harley, with the banner by me. Yeah, overall, first off, great banner. Really nice color effects, some really great detail at the clouds. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Gives off, like, that seven late 70s, early 80s, like, poster vibe to it. Uh-huh, right, right. Really good stuff. Love it. 
Right, yeah. This one, I'll talk about the banner for this one uh, real quick. I honestly had a blast making the banner for this one. Uh, like, pulling from various sources and then having, like, the giant, like, because it's underneath, uh, like, the ice. It's like, oh, here's this big old pocket of life thriving under the ice. Which I thought was the case in The Last Dinosaur. Uh, looking back at it, I was looking through the footage recently, and I was like, oh, that's not the case? Oh. I thought that was the case since they were, like, you know, underground, under ice and whatnot, but, oh well, creative liberties. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, I like that, it's like, oh, here's the, like, the smoke from the volcano rising up, and then eventually would turn into, the, like, the ash rain that would appear in the story that, like, you know, the multicolored fire effects going on with the burning mountain implied to have been shot by Godzilla. And then just, uh, you know, the polar... I love... Honestly, in a weird way, my favorite part of this banner is Godzilla's source and the, ice, uh, the polar borer. Uh, I <laughs> really like the way those two were implemented. And if you look right beneath the tip of the polar borer's drill, you could see uh, mast and thrust... Right in there. So tiny, tiny. He's tiny and kind of obscured, but he's there. He is there. So, but yeah, just all around, this is probably one of my, probably one of my at least top three favorite banners. I'd say. It it's a really good one. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I love the whole set, late seventies, early eighties, like creature feature aesthetic to it mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and then just just two colossal giants like you know splashing in the water with the volcano going off in the background under in in a giant pocket of ice <laughs> yeah it's a i mean it, i think we've all seen like there's been plenty of shows at least at least when i was growing up that had like that idea like teen titans they went like antarctica and they drilled underneath the ice and there was a world of dinosaurs like that or like like i remember tarzan the animated series under the jungle giant thing of dinosaurs mm -hmm. uh there are definitely i mean this is like a classic theme so it was very cool to see that bring to the kwc um and i think that's the best part which is the uh the location and the characters mm -hmm. but uh, for me, I honestly wasn't the most sold on the battle itself. That mm. was my biggest takeaway. And that's, a, uh, which was, I liked it, but at the same time, when I ever thought of the, the two actually fighting, I was immediately just coughingly said, yeah, but the, the moment someone decides to bring a flamethrower into the match, it's pretty much game over. Mm -hmm. So I never really bought the battle and that and it kind of led me to not buying the ending hmm. as much as maybe others had did mm -hmm. right that's that's honestly a completely fair point in my mind uh it was like in a way uh like because that was kind of the hardest part too i know i noted that in my mind when i was first writing this and i was like you know got to the point where godzilla and godzilla first godzilla source first fought and i was like how the heck am I going to continue this match and make it interesting? My only didn't real... Get, yeah, my didn't only... Godzilla lose to two babies, even though he had a flamethrower? Oh yeah, he absolutely did. But they didn't had Godzilla well. also <laughs> did Guts Didn't Godzilla also lose to a monkey? He had electricity, though. <laughs> they had webbed and he had electricity, so they had something going for them. Godzilla Source ain't got nothing except maybe radiation drugs. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the the kind of point I would say is for the larvas, they had something. Say what you will, but yes, they Godzilla lost to them. He was outsmarted, and he was also trapped in a web that he couldn't break out of. Mm -hmm. So, because it's like a kind of established, especially if you go to like Son of Godzilla, that there there are there's things that can like even like he can't break out of. Um. So I liked that idea. Uh, again, is that those, those were... budget, is that is that including the budget of his later films? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I I liked I liked the uh, I li I don't get me wrong I liked the battle it was cool but I always felt the underdog was a little too strong whereas I would compare this to Gorosaurus versus Dest Destoria uh, whereas you have a monster that had no way can win. But that's an epic fight that the two go through. And yeah. while the the fight is epic, 
I was kind of waiting for one side to win. And when the other side kind of lost because of thing that mon- the other monster has no control over, it kind of felt like victory given to monster. Well, I mean, I guess I can who say had all the, who had all the power to begin with. Yeah. The, the it was, there was no build up to uh, how the monster was beaten. And like, if, Go- if, 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 uh, I guess I'll just spoil it. Uh, yeah, in ahead, regards to, if Godzilla had in the previous, like, shown that he was, like, beaten by being contained, then it would work. But the problem is he was beaten by being contained and then immediately busted out of a vo- – then traveled through a volcano and busted out. Oh, right. So it was kind of shown that Monster cannot be contained and then Monster was contained and, and lost. So I was just like, mm. hmm. Right. I think... Hey guys, you might want to give him lamp. <laughs> oh, oh god! <laughs> oh jeez! Did someone say lamp? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna give you a lamp. Well, there's gonna be plenty of lamp to share around here, Grandpa Mothman, Grandpa Moth Zone, whatever. Yep. But yeah, I... pop in lamp. Calls me Bruvere. <laughs> So ultimately, the reasoning of my explanation to how Godzilla got here wound up being my undoing from a narrative perspective. Gotcha. For me, for, <laughs> for, for me, I, but I'm I'm that we I'm that weird kind of uh, I, I I I again for Godzilla's source, I am not his biggest fan. I mean, I'm the guy that killed him and made him, and you know took the shotgun and, and retired him. <laughs> so uh, spoilers. Uh, but yeah, no, it was a uh, it was still a great match. Like it was expertly written. Uh, it was fantastic in regards to the detail. The Cuman character by far stole the show for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely 1,000%. Oh, he was fun. Uh, Free Mastin, Mastin Thrust was a lot of fun to write. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, he was He was by far the best part of this match. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I I must say that, again, I did, I did, it was not like I was like hating on this match. There's just one aspect I didn't like, right. which is... Just because and then it everything was a else was consistent. Yeah, but the detail, the 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 the, the battle, uh, the detail for the battle, and even the human characters and the interaction of that character with again the, the, the I love the interaction between the character and Godzilla Source. Mm-hmm. I love that in regards to his connection and you know his obsession. It was very much like uh, Moby Dickish in regards to uh, Ahab versing the whale. Uh huh. Right. Except the I whale. Just, except the whale got a lot bigger the last time you saw him. I just didn't like it when the whale that Moby Dick was chasing then fought, uh, then fought a a megalodon, and the megalodon uh-huh. that could fire lasers, and the megalodon that fired lasers was then beaten by a whirlpool, and uh-huh. the whale won. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, hey, Nakoda. So why is the megalodon firing lasers? Uh, comparing Godzilla source to Godzilla, it's like imagine and. I was doing the comparison for Ahab and Moby Dick, like the in 240, how you had the central character trying to kill the Moby Dick, and then Moby Dick suddenly has to fight a, a, a megalodon that ha- fires lasers, and it's being by and how the ending essentially goes up is the megalodon that shoots lasers gets stuck in a whirlpool and the whale wins. It's kind of like how I felt it, <laughs> Na- at least on a narrative level. Felt. Kaiju X, it's just like your trial of bite ma- trial of pod match. Yeah, Great shot honestly, doesn't Great shot doesn't understand genius. <laughs> I, I had my own reasons for that match. I'm just, just, you know, just saying, just saying. Re, Gre, Kaiju X, don't be offended by him. He uh, broke hey, match one sixty four. Actually, thinking about it now, if you could just write that match with the Rogue Titan and the Colossal Titan, I think that'd be a way cooler fight in regards to being on the same level. Hmm. You want the guard gar- again? Giant humanoids and those that I actually think could stand a chance. Bam. Well, right, but isn't the feeling of helplessness also something driven there too? I'm just saying. <laughs> you and it's an excellent counterpoint, but I'm a nerd and I just want to see the rogue titan punch monster X in the face. Fair enough. <laughs> Let me have my desires. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I think I don't get me wrong. I'm like, you know, I don't see too much of like I totally get where Gray Shot's coming from, but I don't think, uh, like I don't think they're like you know, there's not really much I could personally do. I wanted Godzilla Source to win just because I wanted I wanted to ha- I actually wanted to have something very similar to 
uh, match 81, where it's like, you know, it's Godzilla beaten, beaten by a monster that you wouldn't have expected to beat him. But the fun part for me, ironically, was the story. I wanted to have a story that made at least a little bit of sense of why that was. I don't know, that was kind of like my weird driving force behind writing this match. But, you know, it's like the fact that it got this much positive praise, too, is kind of makes me weirdly happy. <laughs> So it's like, woo it was like, it wasn't the result I was expecting, but uh, it was like, cause I'm kind of like, uh, like when it comes to kind of getting what I want, most of the time I'm pretty like, you know, pretty like, you know, iron willed and steadfast and just be like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I don't care what anyone says. You know, if the, if, if the outcome's bullcrap to somebody, guess what? They're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, and that's how we got deal with it. And that's how we got Black Moth and uh, Maguma in the KWC. Yeah, Iron Willed, <laughs> Iron Willed, uh, Kaiju X saying, uh, "We're either putting him in or I'm walking." I was like, <laughs> "No, please." As if we had that conversation. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, but yeah. Again, fantastic match uh, overall. My my n- my nitpicks aside, uh, you you and Harley did a great job on this because we can't forget Harley also. Oh yeah, I think she did. Because I don't know how you guys work. Because I know you two do a lot of the matches. I'm not sure if she's just an editor. I'm not sure if she has a creative consultant kind of thing. But overall, the match was still great. Yeah, Harley and I, we just kind of like you know right up to a point. Then when I. Don't like generally. I uh, technically for this one, it's a little misleading because it should say Andrew Sudamirsky and Harley Jameson. I don't know why it's the other way around, but you know that's just a minor nitpick. Nothing too, nothing too. Uh, like how you know, dare a woman to throw you under the bus? How dare, <laughs> how dare a woman get credit in 2018? Uh. <laughs> but but no, like you know, this was something I kind of spearheaded. But this, I also this was both around the time where. I was having a hard time getting motivation to write. And, you know, it was obviously around that one month gap we had for, you know, get your Godzilla Source matches in now. So, you know, I kind of needed Harley's help to just finish these up. Uh, but freaking, uh, like, yeah, Harley did a, like, you know, like generally we kind of like, you know, I write up to a point and when I can't write anymore, I have like, I lay out kind of an uh, outline for Harley to follow as something, uh, just like a guideline, and then you know she kind of like you know follows the follows the uh, follows the path. Then I go through and make modifications, or continue on where she left off in case she stopped. And that's how it generally works between the two of us. Uh, but with that said, yeah, she honestly did a fantastic job being able to pick up on, yeah, just being able to pick up on my slack uh, and just you know. And just, you know, kind of carried it through to the end. And, you know, a lot of, like, really cool dialogue bits. And I know one I wanted to use for a fact was you ding dong. That, something, yep, yes. that was something for the movie. Had to use it. As well as actually, like, the first, uh, I think, like, one of the first lines Mastid says at the way beginning. Uh, or just one of them. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, that's right. The damn thing is jammed again. Uh, yeah, that's another line from the movie because the freaking gun. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> but no, Harley did like you know, at, like you know, the parts she touched up, the parts she added on, fantastic stuff. Really glad I got her to help. Uh, got her help with this, and just yeah, it was just all around really good. So. And yeah, yeah, just yeah, like I said, this match itself was a lot of fun. A continuation of G eighty four and the last dinosaur. The heck is going on here? Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see. I know Tyler kind of said what he needed to say. Uh, Alex, did you have anything to add on? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, like Grace just said, I really love the detail. I love the world building. I love the character, and of course, Billy. <laughs> should uh should have put in the credits inspiration alex williams <laughs> uh i'll put it there in white so it's <laughs> author harley jameson andrew sunamursky but then if you highlight if you like highlight over it it'll say insp- inspiration inspired by alex williams 
<laughs> but yeah, I really love the like the adventure kind of feel you get from the cast of characters masked in and oh, or the kaiju. Mm-hmm. Fight's really good. I know that I had a lot to say, but it's kind of escaping from me since I'm still recovering Aww. from Ligma. <laughs> from Ligma to blast it? <laughs> but yeah, I thought this, I thought really thought this was actually a really good match, and and yes, while the last Godzilla Source match is still good, I think this should have been the grand finale. Because this one is the best Godzilla Source match. And like said, oh, for the banner, I still love the whole late 70s, early 80s creature feature aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Wait, oh, so yeah, did I miss good. the whole talk about the first two ones? or where, where it, we We're just talking about 240 at the moment. But you can, like, we haven't really oh, okay. dived into 241. Okay. Oh, so I, I just, I barely made it then. Yeah, you, yeah, we're just talking about the first match uh, for the discussion, so. Yeah, Kaiju X was fashionably okay. late as usual. Yep. <laughs> yep. Hey. Well, you were just late for each other. I mean, that's pretty much my MO at this point. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> Wait, uh, let's see. Uh, Dakota, did you have anything to say about uh, Match 240, now that you're here? <laughs> well, it was late to come out so that was one thing and then what else was there uh well i really i really liked how you you guys you use the atomic spitballs in the match mm-hmm. actually and shock yours now that now that comes to my mind i think this is actually yeah. the first match we've oh, yeah, shock- oh. yeah. yeah. freaking great use there it was a like... nice callback a lot of good inspirations used for this match mm-hmm. yep and then I I also agree with a uh, GBJ that th- I feel like this should have been the last match. Yep, the good old grand finale. Yep, and for that I say that I have this thing to do. Warning! Warning! Bullshit <laughs> alert! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, if... I, I got I bought a button because I got bored. Hmm. Nice. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Weird. Do you guys want to dive into two forty one now? Unless anyone has any final comments for two forty. Um, I don't think. I, I think I'm good. Yeah, I think I have said what I like. You know, first match to utilize Shockyurus. First match to use. I think it's also the first match, just in general, to use G eighty four. Yeah. Like, sure, that's just a cosmetic thing, but I think this is the first match to feature G84. It, it, it gives it a different feel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. So. Yeah, that's... Yeah, definitely, definitely, uh... Yeah. Definitely a different feel, and I will also say in reg- it works with the banner. I mean, it gives it the banner, adding that it feels like an older banner, which also helps in regards to giving it that, using an older Godzilla skin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You know, it kind of ties into that whole like you know creature feature thing in a way. It was like you know, it, it feels like a retro throwback to old adventure dinosaur movies. So, but honestly, I'm just yeah, I'm kind of humbled and glad that everyone really loves the match. So. Meanwhile, pit fire free. Everyone has blow torches outside, ready to burn my arse for having Godzilla lose. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I actually. Here's the thing I gotta say. I, 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 again with like Hedora versus burning Godzilla. I'm okay if Godzilla loses. Uh, I, I, and I think the story Godzilla. It was okay for Godzilla to lose. It was just for me. I think it. Everyone has their different ways on how the monster should lose mm-hmm. and for some totally fine for me i felt like a little iffy and i'm sure for some they were screaming kaiju x's downfall upon reading the finale <laughs> right. or the final part right right but this isn't match 81 this is going to be 241 uh we'll now transition into match 241 uh godzilla stories versus rodan versus mudo both of them 
Uh, AKA Old Yeller. <laughs> basically, <laughs> this is the final. The happiest day of my life. <laughs> no, it's the second happiest day of your life, Alex. The happiest day will be when Hasey Ghidorah is retired. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, wait. I'm wrong. That will be your second. Godzilla Source is your third. First is taking down Grayshot. <laughs> Well, that's my second favorite day. My first favorite best day, or I, I don't know what I'm saying. First best day, fuck it, I'll just say best day, is when we finally get rid of the Zilla kaiju <laughs> and the Ultraman kaiju. <laughs> well, when we discuss the KWC uh, survey, I think you might be a little shocked at the... Uh, some of I already the know what it is, Grayshot. You told me yesterday. I told you ago. some things. I didn't tell you everything. I still know enough. <laughs> Just <laughs> enough. But anyway, uh, aside from Alex's, you know, you know, freeing uh, fan ultimate fantasy of what. Also, you Great Shot, don't piss Nagoda and I. <laughs> you wouldn't like it when we're angry. <laughs> the car will shoot up the forums. <laughs> I swear that feels like it's become our own meme. Anyway, uh, yeah, God's, yeah. The final match to feature Godzilla Saurus. Is Godzilla Source versus Rodan versus Mudo, written by Christian Saliber and the banner by Christian. I have to say, I really dig the banner for this one. It's like it's on the uh, it's simplistic. Uh, you know, honestly, the most eye catching thing to me is the female Mudo. Her yeah. model, whatever model that was pulled from, is so crisp and clean. I'm in love with it, and I need to ask Christian. Get me that picture so I can use it for myself. Yeah, it's a uh, overall good image. It's also kind of, uh, if you look at it, it's kind of misleading almost in regards to, uh, if you look at the Muto side, there's something in the distance in the top right-hand corner, oh, yeah, yeah. which leads in later into the match, which I was just like, whoa, what? But, yeah, no, it's a... It's a good tease of everything in the story that it involves. Mm -hmm. right. uh, As yeah, any good band. I, I can agree with Kaiju X for that yeah. Mudo picture image. Oh, the male one? Yeah. Oh, the male one I'm familiar The two male ones I recognize where they're coming from. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I have those pictures for those ones, but. Right, right. The but I, one, like, I mean, there's that... that picture from. Uh -huh, right. Yeah, like I said, that female Mudo image is gorgeous, and like I said, just the composition, the uh, the composition of the pitch, uh, the banner too is actually you know really nice. It you know sets things up simply, and as Gray Shot obviously alluded to, you know it, it hints at certain story details that happen within the course of the story. So. But that said, uh, like, sadly, I know I said, oh, I'm going to have this read by the time we got there. I sadly couldn't. <laughs> I'm like, I, I was able to read through some of it. Uh, but I wasn't able to read through the whole thing like I originally planned. So it's like, you know, if I'm missing out on a couple things or, you know, something's not coming to mind, then I apologize in advance. Gosh darn it, Kaiju X. <laughs> well, uh, let me give you an explanation of why I chose this as the finale from my point of view. Um, oh, gee, I wonder. I what the obvious symbolism is uh well first off godzilla source uh while i like 240 and i think it deserved to be a five match or a zero match because that's where i usually i try to put the be like the better matches unless it's a timing issue or something of that nature which i'll get into later uh we all know 210 is better than 211 <laughs> <sighs> well again i we we attempt to but most zero or five matches usually are uh usually are like are monumental or maybe not monumental but they're like i try to put them as like the pillars to strive for like the the some of the best matches that we have to offer um and for 240 that is definitely the case it's a fantastic story driven match with some epic monster action uh that no matter the ending is still th great is a fantastic and greatly written uh but for this match in particular it worked on many levels for godzilla source for Two, I will set forth. One, Christian was the one that brought Godzilla Source into the KWC, so it only made sense first off for me to have him be the one that's, that 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 uh, has the monster go out. And he actually ever asked uh, asked me uh, if this could be the finale, and 
if you and if on a narrative level and for the ending, I think it also works as the reason. It's understandable why because Godzilla's oh, character saying... is one of tragedy, not one of not one of victory, hmm. which I think people kind of <laughs> miss in regards to how the monsters portrayed. Godzilla's always lost. Godzilla's oh no, no, no. I, I I like the ending. I I agree. I'm just saying for mat better match overall. I think two forty should have been the last one, but. Oh, I'm not saying this is a bad match by any means. No, no, no. I, I, no, no I'm, I'm just saying overall, Godzilla's Horse's character. Godzilla's yeah, yeah. character is they a monster of that lost a battle and gained great... Uh, you can almost say it gained ire against humanity and then turned that ire against humanity once it gained power. Whereas, if you were to take... Without re- having that, with, that, with Godzilla's Horse just being Godzilla's Horse, it's a monster that's not supposed to... At least in my mind. It's not a monster that is supposed to win. It's a monster that is not never supposed to be able to defeat the uh, this uh, the enemy in front of it until it is until it changes. Hmm. And for this case, it's giving it's a it a, it, it kind of sticks with the tragedy of the character. Maybe I'm, I'm giving way too much credit for the monster in its appearance, but it's a uh, it sticks with the tragedy of the character, but still, I think leaves on a more positive end for uh, the monster in itself. Uh, because I think the character, uh, first off, this is a female Godzilla Saurus. Uh, is oh, yeah, that's, by that's that's why I want to say my problem is not that Godzilla Saurus is female, is the way he said it. Let, and by quote, yes, this this Godzilla Saurus was female, and not just a female, but a mother at that. That the way he wrote it just s- seems like he's insulting all this, like we couldn't piece it together. Like, he it seems like he literally had to spell it out. Uh, I, like we were all too stupid to get it, right? I mean, it's like literally like the like. I mean, what the? I get. I kind of get what it's going for. Uh, I, it's like in a way, like the match works with that sort of documentary thing, and you know, I think even documentaries also sort of explicitly state, "Oh, it's a female and a mother." So it's like that could be the case, at least in my experience with documentaries. <laughs> you know, I got some really bad documentaries on hand. I I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, 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 about lamps? no, but what I'm saying is, like, that's like those two sentences could have been better phrased. Not, it could have been written in a better way that doesn't treat us like we're idiots. Mm-hmm. At least that's how I perceive it. Oh, all right, I doubt that was Christian's intent, but you know, I totally get where you're coming from, though. I do, or at least it seems like he had to spell it out for us and mm-hmm. not have us like gradually get it. All right. Oh, granted, it's not like the sentence after that would have, you know, already, you know, emphasized that already. You know, it's like, oh, she was grieved by the familiar sight of her nest and yeah. with a single egg. It, it's yeah, like if you got rid of those two first first two sentences, we would have been good. Mm-hmm. Right, right. That's that's my real. That's really my only problem with the match. Just those two sentences. Other than that, like I said, it's still a solid match. Mm-hmm. It's actually rather interesting to see Godzilla Source being depicted without, like, you know, just a feet. I mean, don't get me wrong, Godzilla Source is an animal, and I think in a way it's kind of fun with the idea. It's a superficial change, don't get me wrong, but it is just kind of a fun idea of, oh, a female Godzilla Source. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> Someone put the super crown on him. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, at least from the parts I read, like, uh,. The Mudo, yeah, the Mudo were really cool. Rodan was really cool. Just, I can't remember everything off top of my head. Uh, I think the interaction between Godzilla Source and Rodan also felt like animals, but also understandable. Like, it's this creature trying to defend its, like, egg, and Rodan is like this... I liked Rodan's character, I, 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 and I enjoyed the arc Rodan had in this story. Uh, minimal of that might be, I did enjoy their interaction. Godzilla Source and Rodan because I think it has it had more it, it built upon why maybe Godzilla I, I, I guess it's like it's this isn't Godzilla and, Godzilla and Rodan's relation this is something new but it, you can see the elements uh like Godzilla and Rodan in like the movies and such right yeah it kind of reminds me of what was alluded to in the movies where or or, or in Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla 2 where it's like oh you know uh, like Rodan was like, or, or like Godzilla Source was like, you know, or like Baby Godzilla was like a parasite egg, where it was like it was an egg that didn't belong 
to that particular nest, but it was put there anyway. It, it's kind of like a setting up to that idea of their, like, strange symbiotic relationship that would, uh, you know, carry on to the future. So I, I think that's actually a really cool, like, I think that's actually a really cool angle to take uh, those two in particular, really giving them a connection in ancient times. And honestly, when it comes to ancient times, M Mudo, really good choice of villains here. Yeah, villains like that you. also don't seem um, like villains at certain points. They just seem like they're also creatures at that time period. Right, exactly. Especially with the uh, with what happens to the male Mido. Mm -hmm. Right. Es yeah, especially. Uh, and I think the Mudos are actually just once again very natural choices for this environment. I mean, the Mudos themselves have lived for two hundred fifty million years. So what's not to say that there could have been these creatures around sixty five million years ago? So it works very naturally. But I'm sure GVJ has something to say, like, but guys, it's, it's, you know, the, the monsters, they feed on radiation. Why would they be feeding up dinosaurs? Or You could argue that case for the movie, too. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Like uh, like I said, aside from that whole, uh, um, explicit, like, saying that he, it was female, I really don't have any problems with this match. I thought it was very solid. I actually really like Godzilla Source and Rodan's relationship. Mm -hmm. They're personality i thought they worked out worked off great plus i think it's a good companion piece for the high size series mm -hmm. i agree yeah absolutely yeah yeah like that's said, the best way solid match mm -hmm. and like as you said the mudos are good villains or i know it's just creatures mm -hmm. so just yeah oh yeah christian you did a really good job and i think like I said, Tyler obviously had some kind just, of... Just please don't add those two sentences again. <laughs> <laughs> and Christian's like, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, but yeah, this is just, yeah, all around. I just wish I had the time to have... I'm going to have to return to this one one day for sure. But, the, uh, for, but from what I've read, you know, hearing from the other guys, and just from what I'm seeing, it's like, yeah, this just all around very... Very solid match, and for Greyshot clearly being introspect, uh, being introspective as he is, which don't get me wrong, I get your line of thinking. Uh, yeah, I think this is honestly a very humble, but good send off to the Godzilla Source character. So, and plus, in a weird way, it was refreshing that Godzilla Source lost. <laughs> Hydro X, Greyshot doesn't understand your genius. <laughs> Or maybe I do That's why he said the well. red one. Not <laughs> oh gosh, Charlie. But yeah, uh, yeah. Just overall, uh, yeah. Christian, well, I two X is a thinking animal. <laughs> His brain is considerably larger than Gray Shots. <laughs> gosh, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay, Gray Shot. You'll probably win in the remake. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, let's, I, I think Alex kind of said what he needed to say. I know Grayshot said what he needed to say. Uh, Birdman, or Moth Zone, whatever. Uh, Grayshot will give you lamp if you say your opinion. Basically. I felt um, the previous match would be a bit better end to Godzilla's Saga. I, this one was good, but I don't think it was as... Uh, there was one thing, I'm not sure if we've asked uh, discussed this or not, that there was one thing I liked that uh, Tatano has used in the match, and that's the, the two male Mutos. Because uh, I remember long, long, long ago, before, before I think even got until 2014 was even out, um, I suggested in the KWC when Mutos added we have multiple of the species in, and that's kind of what he's done while keeping to the rules. Yeah, I thought. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought it was only a male and female. I, that, I guess that was. I guess that's something Gray Shot's going to be flexible with. Uh, I guess. I guess the point we're trying to make here is that we don't want it. Well, I'm obviously going to have to rephrase the FAQ when that comes along, and that's going to be updated with you know, oh, you know, Harley and. Uh, Birdman or, you know, new members to the KWC team and whatnot, so I'll make sure to re rephrase it in such a way that makes sense, 
But, uh, like, our point is we don't want a bunch of male and female Mudos. That we feel like that's not in character with them. But, like, the idea of having two male Mudos corresponding with the female, I think, is more fit. Like, the way it's handled in this match is very fitting. I would also say that in regards to the... Again, if it makes sense, because if we saw the end of 2014, there's more than two eggs. Mm -hmm. There are, like, hundreds of Mutos. Mm Mm-hmm. So if this is a time period where the mutas existed naturally, it would be understandable that these creatures, there's a male and a female. They're like bugs. There's going to be multiple of them. Like there's multiple Rodans. Like there's a, they, there's also in this match, uh, it's explicitly stated that there's multiple Godzilla source. It's an ancient time. It's it, it builds upon it. What I don't want to see is when there's like 500 female mutos in a perfectly normal, like, uh, it's only attack New York City right, modern right. day with no uh-huh. explanation. Absolutely, it's just, mm-hmm. it's it, 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 it's a, there's a difference between a match that doesn't explain itself and a match that just takes it uh, takes some uh, an idea for granted. And this match yeah. thoroughly used it. Also, the it, in regards to oh, well, this match should have been labeled Muto versus Muto. It was very brief and used so quickly in regards to how the third Muto is introduced that. It also kind of reflects just the senseless violence that the Godzilla sword, the female Godzilla swords, goes through. It's just like it, it, this, there's this attack. She's separated from her mate, and she never sees the mate again. Um, hmm, and right, right. it, it kind of works with this. Just like it just happens. Mm, it's right. just the senseless violence that occurs, and there's no way to forewarn it. Right, right. It, I, you know, it's like I, nature. It's full fury kind of thing. Yep. Hy- hypothetically, how would you feel about like? more than two mudos in like a post-apocalyptic setting uh i would be okay with it but keep in mind that from what i, we I mean it's not they're not gonna like be grouped together it'd be like kind of like spaced out like say there's one here two there one there or well, if it's and then... multiple mudos in the world is fine especially yeah like, the i'm not saying all grouped together just spaced out yeah but keep in mind that they pair off is what we can definitely see like i don't i don't see like the female having a group of males i think it was very much explicitly shown in the movie that they there's a they choose each other mm-hmm. and... hey, shot. don't be species <laughs> you never well, know what the mood is like there could yeah, be a I... female that has a posse of males there could be yeah, female or... mood, mudos mudos could be gay you, you don't know <laughs> that. uh yeah or they could have a harem who knows but you know uh no what i'm saying is keep in mind those like limitations if i see i like when I read a match, it very much does come down to if I read a match and I something seems off from what I know of the character, I will explicitly rework it. Like for instance, there was a match that I just read that, that there was a monster used and they, they were used in a way that did not work with the character. Like and I had to go in and change it because it's like, no, you cannot use the character like this. If you are going to use this monster and this interpretation of the monster, you cannot say that the monster came from this place. It does not work with that character. So, I went in and changed it. Um, so so yeah. you're saying, so you're saying, Hedora can't come out if someone's asked. <laughs> the the, I guess I'll just say this: it's like if you're going to use a monster, use it correctly in regards to a, a, the incarnation. For instance, King Ghidorah Hesai is not uh, can think he is like the top dog and think of himself as this ultimate monster, but he is not uh, the King of Terror, say, yeah. for example. Right, right. Right. Uh, Because we've all seen his baby photos. Yep. So, just a heads heads up there. Fair enough, fair enough. I probably should. I I think I know exactly what you're referring to, and maybe I should have taken uh, initiative on that. But that was also like kind of like uh, three hours later, twenty eight thousand words. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I know you guys do like edit a lot of matches. So, but in any case, um, the uh, yeah. So that I think that's pretty much my final result in regards to this match for myself. Does anyone else have any notes about the match? No. Right. No. I, I think uh, yeah, I think Nagoto's the only one that really needs to see if he has anything else to say. Oh, okay. Uh well, I like the personality. I like the personality given to the monster. That's that's about it. And now I'm gonna be executed for big mad monsters. Gotcha. <laughs> that was Dakota, everyone. Uh, but yeah, I think that about covers everyone that's 
said their piece on the matter. Uh, so, but yeah, uh, and so in the meantime, uh, we'll say goodbye to God's old source forever. See you later, which will also tie good riddance, in, right? But which will also tie into something we're gonna cover later, but after the KWCEs have been covered. Uh, but for right now, uh, we're gonna hop on to 242 with the last of the KW, the most recent KWC. As of this recording, I swear I think one's going to come out tomorrow. <laughs> oh, holy shit. A new one came out. Wait, what? No. Yeah, check check the website. He's kidding. He's kidding. He's kidding. Check the website. I can tell you right now that the match is not coming out Kai today. Kai he insulted your intelligence. Gosh, Believe me. I just checked. It wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> you bugger. <laughs> See, I'm not insulting his intelligence. I'm being honest. <laughs> I know. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Ne- uh, here's the most recent KWC uh, 242: Frankenstein vs. Maguma, written by Patrick Allen Green and Banner by me. Yeah. Uh. I didn't yes. read it. <laughs> oh, boohoo! Anyway, I can uh, Well, I did. <laughs> So did I a long time ago. <laughs> uh, but um, no. Overall, uh, I think I would like. Just a, I think there should be a classification of matches, just called Maguma matches, which is monster wanders into icy wasteland somehow and finds a giant walrus and then does battle with giant walrus. Uh, well, but, time, uh, to, time to retire, Maguma. <laughs> Actually, out of all the additions, I think he has, like, the most uses uh, when it comes to, like, monsters we've added to the KWC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People, yeah, people really love Maguma for one reason or another. Yeah, like, Black, I think Black Moth and Maguma have gotten plenty of matches. But, um, yeah, no, it's in regards to the match itself, it's basically your classic KWC battle with, like, Frankenstein is, like, the pro tag. It's, like, he's the one that has carries the maybe the most heart through the story. More so, definitely way more at the end than at the beginning, which maybe kind of is like a little offsetting. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I thought it was like a nice little KWC match. Nothing spectacular, but still really good. Just still really good. Right, right. It still has enough heart. But I remember reading one of the comments being like, I, you know, suddenly got a little like emotionally driven out of nowhere near the end. But, uh, but yeah, it's like, you know, it does, it's like Frankenstein does clearly have some kind of story. And it's a bit of, like, spoilers, but it is a bit one of tragedy in that he is the, not the one to come out on top here. He he loses really badly. And it's just like, you know, it's just kind of nature taking its toll, but he finds peace in death, so. Yeah, I think there's something, So I think there's something you can definitely say about that, mm. which is not, you don't have to win. And, it does, like, sometimes monsters don't necessarily want or have to win. For that, for the end, for the ending to be satisfying. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree with that. It's like there's the physical win, sure, but you know you can win on a much deeper emotional level too. Yep. So. Anyone else? Did anyone else uh, catch or was able to read this match? Uh, Alex uh, Birdman, did you have any thoughts on two forty two? He says give him lamp first. What? Is he being attacked? He wants lamp. You gotta give him lamp first. Uh, uh, what the heck was going on with Birdman there? Goodness, I, I swear. I heard like multiple voices going on his side. Uh, Dagoda, did you have anything to say real quick? He said he's going to be mute. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right, because he was doing dishes or something like that. And with GBJ, you haven't read it? I guess that's pretty much all we're going to have to say about 242. Uh, um, yeah, I guess it's hard to say since Bergman can't really comment at the moment. Mm. Yes, uh, but I guess as the final KWC news, uh, expect the 243 to come out in the next few days. Uh, definitely on one day in particular. Mm-hmm. And I will say that, unintentionally, uh that you should probably keep an eye out because it is going to be a hell of a match and just to specify this uh i'm going to post an image in the kwc 
uh, chat real quick, and I, I just want I just want GVJ to say his feedback in regards to the monsters. All so, right. if you give me, ju- ah, here we go. I think this, yeah, this should be the final version. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I like it. Pretty neat so far. Okay, awesome. Except for one monster, the blue what? one with the horn. He looks kind of out of place. What? I have you know, all of them are perfectly in line, and they are all threatening, and, you know, I can't imagine. Actually, I showed this to my girlfriend, and she said the exact same thing. <laughs> That's great. She was, she was like, it works, but the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the blue one. You Space Godzilla? No, the other blue one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh... honestly, it's really nice, like... Let me put it this way. The monster roster here is really nice because it feels like a lot of them... I, I don't think... Uh, like, there's a nice handful of these that haven't been used until recently. So, it's like, it's really nice to see a lot of them come back. As far as the results go, we'll talk about that when it comes along next month. So. Right. Sweet. Well, in that case, then let me just uh, eliminate it. That way... Can't... Oh. Wait, what? Nope. Hang on Can't a second. Go. I got that for you, man. Nope. Ah, uh, damn it. Beat me to it. Uh, but now on to the KWC. It's too late. Matches. I got the link. <laughs> you know, as they say, what's what's on the internet stays on the internet. Anyway. Joke's on you. It's not the final, final version. Ha ha. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Bird Zone, you're back. Uh, 242 real quick. Just, uh, make it super quick. It's average by a lap tip. Okay, fair enough. Uh, now we'll see. Uh, it's average, but I liked it. That's what he said. Uh, but now we'll jump into this month's KWCE. Uh, we have two KWCEs to cover. Uh, the first one here is the last KWCE of the uh, last. In September, we held a special event known as Shintember. It was our first monster month for the KWCE. So it was all focused on Shin Godzilla. And the match we're covering here is the finale to Shintember of Ultraman Orb versus Godzilla Shin. Honestly, when I was reading through this, I was like, my... This was honestly a really... Like, as a guy who has not watched a single episode of Orb, does not understand the context of Orb, and just not all all around familiar with Orb outside of name, this was really good. This was actually a really... Really interesting match, kept things going, and probably my favorite aspect of all this was Shin Godzilla's characterization. I loved the way he was handled here. It was like, he was not wholly this evil creature, but there was, like, the emphasis of his loneliness, like, I love the way that was played out here. Crawling in <laughs> my skin. Hey, you should have gone for the obvious crawling in my shin, but anyway. I know. <laughs> it's just like shin. A whole bunch of missed opportunities. Right, so it's like, uh, like the way that was handled was wonderful. Yeah, just shin's sense of characterization for being a stiff, emotionless creature. I think, like, in narrative form, he works out really well, surprisingly. Like, I didn't get the impression that this didn't feel like, like, didn't, it, I guess it's hard to determine since I think the whole idea is like, oh, you know, interpret what you see with Shin Godzilla. But I felt like at least going off of the Who Will Know song, this, I can kind of see this kind of creature matching with what that song has to offer, you know. So I didn't see it as like, you know, being too out of character. And then, yeah, Ultraman Orb was actually another, like, really... Like, again, as a guy who wasn't familiar with this character, was definitely like, whoa, whoa, you know, it's like, he could do that? I was like, whoa. But, yeah, but for me personally, like I said, if I were more into Orb, I think I have a lot more praises to sing with how Orb was handled. And judging from the positive reaction, I think you handled that really well. But Shin, for me, was a really... He was just the highlight for me in this match. And I love the use of his adaptation abilities. Which I have a feeling if the KWC enables, well, I, I don't want to say, well, granted the results speak for themselves, but uh, 
let's say if Shin were in the KWC... Which you can, I will say, for the most part, if you're writing a Godzilla Earth match, I would recommend you make it for something other than the KWC, or you're going to be waiting many, many decades. Or you could just submit the KWC. I'm going to be updating that soon enough with, uh, like, yes. you know, Godzilla Earth and, like, the anime stuff, the trading battle stuff, and all that fun Do stuff. It. So, uh, Do but, it. but yeah, uh, yeah, uh, like, the way Shin was handled was excellent. And I love, like, the way it handles his adaptations here, like, his whole environmental adaptation ability, I think it was used really well here. It was like, oh, you know, you made a hole inside his chest, just make that another mouth to shoot an atomic ray from. Awesome idea. Awesome. Or even something that happens at the way end, which is chilling. A chilling moment at the way end. I don't want to give uh, too much away for those who haven't read it. But I was like, who? Damn. That's, uh, that was like a really creepy moment for Shin when he started going in that direction. It was. Damn, that was unnerving when I when I first read that. Whew. But yeah, like, I'm sold. Mm, right. Uh, I'll read it. Oh, right, right. It's a shame you haven't read it, but yeah, it's honestly, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, just that last part. It's like, it's just as crazy as you would expect it coming from Shin, but it's... Mm, I, I I thought it was really unnerving and effective. I I just mm, love the way it was handled. And he likes it. Just shin all around handled beautifully. So and if the KW let me put it this way. If the KWC is will be if the KWC is willing to be this flexible with the character, then I see a lot of potential for this character as a fighter. That's that's the best I can say. So, uh, like, Alex, did you read it, or... Oh, I... oh, I didn't read it. Okay. I said you sold to me. Right, okay. Uh, I guess, uh, anyone else here read it? Or am I just gonna have to go to, uh, Birdman to see, like, any sort of thoughts he had on it? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, the banner that was made for it. Ooh. That's a nice one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So what exactly distinguishes Orb from the other Ultraman? Uh, uh, or he uses powers from the other one to borrow forms because he kind of sealed away his original power. So he copies his opponent's monsters. No, uh, he or, or he, he takes uh, powers from the other Ultraman. So like he'll take uh, Ultraman, he'll combine Ultraman and Ultraman Tiga's powers to make his uh, like his regular form because uh, in the past he kind of blew up a forest trying to kill a monster and then he started feeling guilty about it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, he also kind of killed his best friend in that fire too, so... Yeah. His, his best friend didn't just turn into Ultraman and walk out be like, hey, I'm cool. <laughs> yeah, right. If it were only that simple. Like I said, I'm not familiar with Orb, so I couldn't really give... Like I said, outside of what this match presents, uh... Like, you know, it was just like, yeah, Orb clearly has a thing where he can kind of, like, combine powers of all their Ultraman and kind of cre kind of create his own powers from it. Even uh, Ultraman Belial, he could actually copy powers from him, which results in a very intense, very, like, bestial moment exactly. in the match where freaking uh, Orb goes berserk. So, that was fun. Oh, yeah. uh, how do I sound right now? Because I'm using a, my computer and I got a... Uh, new mic on Amazon. Uh, you're a little on the quiet side. Yeah. Because this was a pretty cheap microphone, like a dollar or something. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, you're a little on the quiet side, my dude, but, uh... You need one of them snowballs. Get them <laughs> snowball mics. This is a pile mic, so I don't even know how good this is. Yeah, it's a little too quiet. Mm -hmm. My mouth is right in front of the microphone. You guys still can't hear me. You're louder. Than no, we can hear you. You're you're just okay. On the quiet side. Right now, it is right on me. Right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you putting your mouth next to the microphone. We can hear you better. It's on the microphone. Or, or are you, you on me? the microphone? Yeah, we can hear you better, but you're not as loud <laughs> as you think you are. Gramps is like, speak so, up, Sonny. This... Can't hear you. Uh, Grayshot, did you read, uh, 
KWC number 27 or? I did not, but I did read the next one, so. Okay. Uh, Birdman, did you have any particular, like, thoughts or additional insight you want to put in for uh, uh, Ultraman Orb versus Shin? How about now? Is this better? Speak up. Or say it again. Mothman, you there? I think he's tight. I think I'm probably gonna have to speak for him just because it's late where he is. So. I go to say go, I will. Good relations with the chips I have. Alright, be on the lookout for sequels to the craziness they will contain, is what Birdman has to say. So. That's. Ooh. Well, yeah, it did end on a little bit of a stinger, so. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to see where this particular story arc takes, you know, Orb and or just, yeah, Orb in particular. So it'll be interesting. Cool. So, uh, In the meantime, we can probably now hop on over to KWCE number 28, the final KWCE match, the most recent one that came out. As something of a, like, you know, slightly early Halloween celebration of... Uh, Audrey. I didn't read it. No. Of Audrey Two versus Pumpkin Rap Rapper. Uh, I read this solely on the fact. I, I again, there are some matches, uh, like the last one, which I'm like, I don't know Ultraman. I am not the most. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, eh. But this one was uh, kind of crazy enough that I just uh, I started reading it and. Honestly, I thought it was pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of Power Rangers. I'm not. I've never seen the Little Shop of Horrors movie. Uh, but the moment I realized this was basically a monster rap battle, I was like, "Okay, you have my approval." Right. You have my attention. Show yes. me what you can do. <laughs> yeah, and overall, slightly disappointed that there wasn't a more of a sing-off between the two. I kind of thought that's how this match was going to go. Uh, less than battle, I. Could, like yes, there's still a battle in this, but I was actually hoping it would be more one of lyrics because like you have two singing monsters, hmm. do it. Have the two have a sing off, and then have like obviously then have the battle after like maybe the the loser of the sing off kind of gets angry and starts an actual fight. But and while the battle is interesting, especially with there's multiple Audreys going about, uh, the ending I felt was just kind of like oh, it's just it just kind of happens. Hmm. And no matter, it, it didn't matter about the singing at all, and it didn't matter about this other stuff. One side clearly had the advantage all along, mm -hmm. and yeah, you know. Oh, I still right. really good. Mm -hmm. I still enjoyed it though. Right. I still would read it again. All right. Yeah, I think it's an overall like you know, it's a like you know, it's a solid match. Like the fight itself was fun, but I do agree there probably could have been more emphasis on it being a rap battle with two singing monsters. What would have been hilarious is that someone wins the rap battle but the uh that but the winner of the rap battle gets killed <laughs> that would have yes. been funny that would have been funny <laughs> that i i especially it would have worked especially with the ending being like but i you know like it being like but i won the rap battle it's like i know uh -huh. and i don't care right right because exactly. i am bad yeah, yeah exactly exactly so it's like you know it could yeah i think it could have tied in better by having spoiler alert by having Pumpkin Rapper win the rap battle, but Audrey 2 just being an overall, having the fight on her side, just taking it, you know. So it's like that could have created a really funny contrast. It would have allowed Pumpkin Rapper to win in his own right, spiritually. But, you know, no, it's, it's like, don't get me wrong, fun match, but, you know, just, uh, yeah, it just didn't take full advantage of its premise of two singing monsters. Definitely agree there. All right. Uh, anyone here okay, read? How uh, do I sound now? A uh, repeat. How do I sound now? Oh, you're coming in clearer, so you're not. Better. As, yeah, okay. better than before. At I least. got it. I went and got a different microphone. Meanwhile, the, we're basically playing dress up with the Godus microphones at this point. It's like which one, <laughs> which one suits me best. Get a snowball, Mike, son. 
But yeah, uh, did uh, Nagoda or Alex read? Uh... I, I I said I didn't read this okay, one. Okay, okay. I I just couldn't <laughs> I couldn't remember the thing oh, you said five seconds uh, ago. Uh... You're getting senile. <laughs> When you, when you said that the next thing was going to be about plans at the battle rap battle, I didn't actually, it would have been a rapping versus singing thing. Yeah, uh, oh wait, he, was that like a tease or something? I think, I think I alluded to the idea of like, you know, the next match involves plants. So, or, uh, something like that. And I think Nagoda responded with something that's like, oh, are they going to be singing or something? You're not wrong. <laughs> I said, watch the next thing be a rap battle. It's or, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's like, watch it be a rap battle or something. It's like, eh, not wrong. Didn't take full advantage of what it could do, but, you know, it's it still does it to a degree, just not in the way that we would all hope for. <laughs> yeah, again, great setup. Uh, and it, while it was good, I think the implementation could have been a bit better. But overall, good job, Christian. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, right. So, so and uh, fun f- <laughs> honestly, this was one a year in the waiting <laughs> because I scrubbed up complete. This was meant for last year's Halloween. I completely scrubbed up and forgot that I had it. <laughs> so I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> oh, man. So, <laughs> it's. Ah. Uh. Way to go, Kaiju. Actually. Yeah, way, way to way go, to Kaiju. Up. Oh, well, at least it's here now. That's the important part. <laughs> uh, well, honestly, in regards to the match I showcased now, I had no idea about it until, well, you made uh, so- someone sent me this message. I was like, can we still have something for this special date? I'm like, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing set for that date. Like, I asked my bro, it's like, hey, do we have anything going on this day? And then my bro was just like, yeah, I don't think so. So I was like, okay, we're taking it. <laughs> just... We we have called dibs. <laughs> we have called dibs. <laughs> and if there is a problem, Anthony will have to come to us. <laughs> oh, no. Please, no. <laughs> I'm just going to have a guy kick down my front door. <laughs> you dare claim this day? I'm like, oh, no, please. Please don't. I'll completely submit to your will. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, uh, I believe that covers Fall of the KWCs and KWC East for the month, but we do have one more important subject to cover. Tyler, I would like you to take us over with the uh, poll results. Yes, so uh, we could, we'll probably go over the final, final results, probably just like a wrap-up ne- uh, briefly next month, But because the, the survey is going on. But for the most part... Most of the data has come in, uh, so what I am going to do is go over all the results that we have for the Toho Kingdom survey, which were was a survey I posted to Toho Kingdom. Uh, if you're still interested, please submit your results. They do matter to us and the entire staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in regards to uh, what exactly I was looking at, there were a variety of questions detailing anything from your overall thoughts to recommendations and suggestions to uh, monster-specific questions. So I guess starting off from the first one, uh, how often do you read a KWC match? This was just basically a starter up question to uh, everyone on the on the token site just to see how many look at them and how often they do. And an overwhelming 57% of those that responded look at every single match that are posted uh, at the KW uh, to the to the front page, Woo-hoo. which is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Only uh, only about 10% roughly read or look at a match once in a while or never look at them so when you when 90 percent of the uh toho kingdom audience uh looks at um, looks at them almost every time uh uh, that is awesome to hear Mm -hmm. that is that is a telling for our writers that are doing a great job and that makes people want to come back and read more Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely so uh now in results to how often do you skip the match and look at just the winner slash outcome about 20 percent said i never do it uh, 40% say they occasionally do it, which I think is like the honest answer. And, uh, I think that is understandable because you have, uh, uh, those that, 
again, sometimes they, there's a monster. Again, for me and Shin and Ultraman Orc, sometimes you just want to see who wins. You're not the most interested in, in uh, reading it because it's not a monster you enjoy. Right. And that's understandable. Right, right. And then we had uh, 27% said uh, once in a while. And then we had uh, uh, then we had every time. So it, about tw- about 13%, which I think is also a testament to the writer. Uh, be, by being a little higher, uh, it kind of works in the favor of the AWC saying, no, we write great matches. People read through them. And yeah, it's a good thing to see. I think it's overall good keep that minimal now we have which math length do you prefer again this is kind of like a gimme question i threw this in for reasons actually let me start doing this so that way you guys can see what i'm looking at mm-hmm. so uh, do, you want me, roughly... do you want me to put these uh, like statistics stuff up on the uh, videos that way people just have a little bit of perspective or you can if you want i'll put i'll throw them in there that way people can see it okay but uh in regard to shorter length matches uh, or which math length do you prefer? Most people prefer the medium length. With actually more people preferring the longer matches than shorter matches. Hmm. That's, I guess you don't want something to be too short. So. Yeah. What was the number for medium matches? So this is between, uh, so shorter matches, about 16% of the audience enjoy them or prefer them. 61% prefer 5,000 to 15,000 length matches. And then uh, 21% roughly like the longer matches, which is like 15K and above. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, those are right. So, you're, so you're like 200s, you're 185s, you know, those, those kind of matches. Versus- 190s. <laughs> 164. Yes. Uh, but actually, uh, also, uh, going up the next question, cause I think it's right here is where we start to see the questions that I really kind of focused on. And this gives me, uh, this gives me some great notes in regards to how the overall quality for the year has been. And so far people have been really enjoying it. Oh, wait, let me throw this to taste in there. Uh, you should have put tasteful as one of the options. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Uh-huh. Should have just right under unreadable, <laughs> tasteful. <laughs> uh, but there we go. So, in regards to total uh, feedback, we had uh, on the breakdown, uh, as it were, we had fourteen point seven one percent thinking it was exceptional. We had fifty two percent, actually, really fifty three percent because it's point nine four. Fifty three percent saying it has been great. So, I think that is awesome. That uh, nearly two thirds of our audience believe we're doing a greater and exceptional job. I think that is a some again great feedback for the KWC in general. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. And then, oh sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say like even if you to account for this, like everyone thinks we're doing a great job. I'm really happy for that. And likewise, the fact that it's like just people in general, like the worst we have that has a significant number is average. That's the worst we like anyone that think it's bad, terrible, and readable are on such a minor scale. It's basically kind of like it's almost a zero yeah the uh the the major thing i will focus on is like especially this year we didn't have a big match like that kind of was like uh, you can say what you will about like 240 or like but i'm looking at like your 190s 185s your 190s your 200s we never had that this year and last year we had like Three, if not, some people consider like two sixteen to be almost like a thir- three and a half kind of. I've noticed with how popular that one has been on the, in the analytics. Uh, like the the big, the biggest well known monsters or this big epic story. But so far, everyone's still like, no, you don't need those. That while people appreciate them, people have been enjoying the KWC just as is, and that's awesome to see. I have a very strong feeling the match that's going to be coming up on the special day might be the match that kind of match but we'll see you will see yeah i i think people will enjoy that match nonetheless mm-hmm. um but we'll, we'll but see. All, we will see. yeah in regards to uh the next one though which story type do you prefer i did uh, expand this a bit and i think the answers might surprise you guys uh so this one was essentially what what kind of uh kwc match do you prefer one with like a little bit of monster action, one with a lot of monster action and human elements, that kind of stuff. 
And in regards to feedback, we had uh, 21% prefer matches that uh, have uh, uh, that have uh, what's the name? All I monster to... action, no human. Yeah, uh, I prefer matches that only monster action. About 20, about 21% prefer that. Then we had uh, 31% prefer ma- matches with uh, a lot of monster action and a little bit hu- human elements. And then even more so with the I prefer that have equal human and monster elements. Oh, cool. Which, yeah. Nice. And then then a little bit of a drop off with about 5% uh, and 1% have it liking those that have most little monster action, mostly human, and then a lot of human. Mm. So I think those are I kind of, I, I, th- I think that shows the middle ground that if we would have done this when we first started the KWC, I think it would have been exclusively with I prefer just monster action. So seeing it that human elements are now kind of the accepted thing in the KWC is also <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. There you go, Pancho. Uh, that's the one you can use. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll use that version. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, but yeah, after, but now, oh sorry, continue. I'm just saying, I, I kind of agree with you, Gray Shot. It's like I'm hoping that we're like, granted, I think human elements have been a thing already in the KWC. So maybe it's just kind of a common thing for the KWC to be like, guys, you don't need just to be pure monster action. Give us a gripping story. Because honestly, all of the best matches in the KWC have had either the best matches or the most popular ones do have some kind of human element to them. Like, as much as you want yeah, to... You forget match 88. Right, right. Match 8 or... Well, yeah, don't get me wrong. There are still those ones too, where it's a very strong, gripping narrative without monsters. Or... Without humans, that's still very much a real possible thing. But I th- let's just keep in mind that most of the matches that are highlighted, that are probably the most popular among the readers, are the ones that happen to have a human element to them. Like, you know, say what you will, but the Baggage Trilogy, you know. Uh, even if the human side is like, you know, it's not perfect, it's not like, you know super in-depth or anything or you know compared to what we have now but it's like you know it still has it there to give it you know some kind of drama to the apocalypse that was going on in those matches or crawling yep. in my shit <laughs> humans not humans monsters are boring right with humans instead <laughs> <laughs> if 240s to say anything about that <laughs> yeah I think uh, Oh, sorry. I used to do a human invading an alien planet match because I I brought that up and apparently we can do that so someone needs to do that. Dude, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. Wait, perfectly fine with what? I couldn't hear him. Having a human invade an alien planet. Like, oh, absolutely. I, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I remember giving my approval. Like that. I would say, Mogera probably fits that mold the best since it's like the mo- the mech that can actually go interstellar mm-hmm. or like go you know into space. Having it like attack the Mysterians and they, you know, or and they call upon like another alien civilization to defend them or something. Yeah, that would be, be really cool. cool. That would be really cool. But here, uh, next up is highlight the top three writers you prefer to read in the KWC. And this is for me gains the most feedback into okay, who do who does the audience uh, again, we have the KWC awards, which you know, that's just voting. Mm-hmm. And that's more so like particular matches. But for me, this is okay, which matches have a uh do the audience gravitate towards for the year mm-hmm. um and for this year uh it honestly kind of makes sense and, so and we have the for gray shot it's more like who am i gonna have to slave the most uh in order to get the most matches out of them <laughs> uh, but anyway yeah it's honestly like who do I, who are the like the writers people go for and i i also should note for on this list uh especially when it came to other people who did write-ins I, I I only put a name up if you had at least five matches. Okay, fair so enough. So that, that's the kind of like the award. This is what I posted, and this is the results, which makes kind of sense in regards to 2018 with how many. So for the writers, 53% of those that uh, picked this question had Andrew, 37% had myself, 34 had Christian, 30% had Josh, 26 had Tom, 25 had Harley, and then uh, it's about 18, it's about in the teens for Kenneth, Christian, Connor, uh, Kashawn, uh, Patrick Allen Green, and Forrest Prunes. So, but everyone received votes, and everyone had a, a good break. 
but this just gives me an idea of like which pe- which matches people prefer to read about and which ones uh it, it, it helps me distinguish because like in my own mind i'm like okay who are <laughs> Who uh, who does the audience actually enjoy reading about? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that also helped me in regards to editing, being like, oh, okay, like, who's who should I focus on? But there are some that I think should be higher on this list. Like, I do think uh, Kishon Johnson should be a bit higher on this list. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also kind of makes sense, like, some of those that are, like, lower, like Christian. He's the only re- – I think I posted one match of his this year. And, yeah, it, he's a great writer, but it explains why he's so low. Uh, some of those, though, just get by, I think, on their name alone, like Tom or Christian, even though they had one match, respectively, this year and no matches, like Tom. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Right, like Tom's a once in a blue moon, but he, he's really made a name for himself, and I think making a name for yourself is very much important, because people will still vote for him even when there is no new matches from him in, like, a year or two, you know? Yeah, also, uh, in regards to the other section, let me give the responses. We had plenty, we actually had a ton for Joe uh, Steiner Jr. We had quite a few for Matthew Williams. Uh, we yes, had KW, KWC is just bullshit, please scrap it forever. <laughs> uh, we had the cartoonist from Godzilla vs. Gigan. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's great. We had DMX. I don't know who that is, but uh, Matt uh, Frank. We had Bill, uh, Jackson Morris. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's quite a few, quite a few for Thomas Fairchild and uh, oh, Landon been... Soto. Right. We had a ton for Landon Soto. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's like, good. He was probably next to Joe Steiner Jr. and Thomas Eckhart. They were probably all like tied, but he uh, Soto probably had like a few more. Wow, cool. Good for him. Yeah. So, yeah, there were, um, and as you can see on the list, like about 13% were for other. So, on that breakdown, there's still quite a few that got up there. Oh, so, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So, so uh, ne- uh, for the award season, you'll probably see them on here because I'm only going to be doing those for 2018, but this is for all the writers. And also kind of gives me of like, hey, Christian, people like your matches. Maybe you should write one again. Mm-hmm. You know, like that kind of stuff. Totally. Or like Josh. Like Josh, hey, we haven't got a match from you. Eh, maybe write one, maybe, please. Thanks. No. <laughs> please don't. We're gonna end up getting Monster X. Gonna <laughs> He's gotta finish his trilogy, man. He's gotta I don't finish. wanna see the same shit over and over. <laughs> uh did you have a very similar thing with banners for this time, or was that just kinda or are you gonna save that for the uh KWC oh, I didn't. I, I I didn't put banners in here. I just uh, this is writers. Okay, just writers. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, uh, but the thing I did post, which is probably going to be a little bit of a shock to everyone, which is if you could add any following Godzilla to the KWC one, which would you choose? And when I prefer, okay, I'm going to post this. I want to stress this right now uh, that I think there might have been so, uh, might have been a little bit of influencing going on with maybe about 20% of matches because suddenly when I posted things on the forums uh, two monsters in particular got a big bump um, but this is where the results are now okay oh yeah it's I, still I, bullshit I could still probably say influencing was going on but hmm it is now nearly a uh, with 29% going to Shin. 28% going to uh rulers like rulers and 20 it's roughly it's 28.9 uh for Godzilla 0203 and it is 28.2 for Ghost Godzilla. Dang. Yeah, it is this, and... this list is still rigged. <laughs> Man, you should have been in the top. <laughs> I will say GMK is still beating Godzilla Earth. Okay, so the exact breakdown is then Godzilla Earth is uh, or Godzilla GMK is twelve point like twelve point nine three. Uh, Godzilla Earth has about eleven percent, and then Minya has about six. <laughs> so <laughs> poor Minya, he never stood a chance. Bunch of ed- edge lords out there. <laughs> yep. But just as an expl- explanation for this breakdown, why I did this is I chose monsters that. I will say this right now. GMK Godzilla never had a chance of getting in this. 
but I did this just to add some monsters to add variety mm -hmm. because uh, I, if for God, if for like we ever were to add them in the future, I just wanted to test what people actually would choose for if they had to put their vote to something. Mm -hmm. And I had to throw in some red herrings just to split the vote just so we could, you know, have, do, are, do they just want an evil Godzilla? No, because the GMK Godzilla's in there and Shin. And uh, did they want just Earth or Shin? No, Earth got destroyed, mm -hmm. which I thought was very interesting to see. Right, compared I, to... Uh, yeah. Right, I mean, honestly, if they were just left to Shin and Earth, there would have been no doubt Shin would have destroyed Earth. But at least by adding the other Godzillas and Minya... Uh, we had had some flexibility of what people would want to see. I still find the whole, like, as cool as it is seeing, Go for me personally, as I vouched for adding Ghost Godzilla to that list, uh, like, it is nice to see that Ghost Godzilla is right up there. But I also do, like Sid, as Grayshot pointed out, it might be because someone else has been tampering with the results. So it's like, eh... You know, so it's like some rigging is going on, but I can't tell exactly from what angle this is being taken from. Exactly. When it comes to the writers and when it comes to the other things, all of that has basically stayed the same. So the there hasn't been any changes there. But the one thing I will say is I've noticed, as specifically after I posted on the forum, two shot up dramatically. And I don't know if that's just coincidence. I don't know if, you know, it is real. Um, I've noticed a few other things that seems like maybe this is one person on multiple accounts or something. Mm -hmm. I don't, again, I, I don't have any evidence to that. I just have my gut feeling. Mm -hmm. But what I will say this is, if you want a monster, if you want to know which Godzilla is going to be added, it's most likely going to be shit. Mm -hmm. Ghost Godzilla is not getting in. Godzilla, Rulers of Earth, is not going to be getting in. But it is cool to see this, and if there are, it, this basically says cutting room monsters and comic monsters have a high, far higher shot now than other monsters. Yeah, absolutely. I will say. All right. Basically, you have a much better chance of seeing... I'm just going to throw this out here. Much better chance of seeing Bagora and Ghost Godzilla. The Griffin. Or, or Griffin or something, as opposed to Anime Ghidorah. Yeah. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> like, I, you will not see the Godzilla pl monster planet monsters in this anytime soon. I don't think I'll be adding any of them. I... Because none of them... Right. I don't think there's a single one that stands out or does anything interesting compared to monster interpretations that have been done before. Right, right. Uh, and that's fair. I, I think the Ghidorah one is interesting, but it's unfortunately on the more OP side of the spectrum where it's like, oh, how do you fight something that can hurt you but not hurt it, you know? Can I, what, can I be honest with you right now? I don't even – I think the – I'm not even kidding you. I think the battle is not even going to be a battle. I think King Ghidorah is just going to swirl around Godzilla, and there's not going to be any touching. And they're like, "Oh no, uh, he's draining touch. Godzilla." They do touch. They do. They actually do fight. Like Godzilla grabs him and throws him around the ground. Uh, and stuff. Heart, more like, like Ghidorah gra like bites him and picks him up. But <sighs> you, so it's so still Godzilla touching. still doesn't move. So Godzilla still doesn't move. Right. It's another thing moving him. <sighs> right. Yeah, That's that still might be the case. We'll see where that fight goes, if it's even good. It's gonna suck. <laughs> but it's like, so there is physical interaction going on, but it's so far not coming from Godzilla doing it. It's more Ghidorah biting him and picking him up. Okay. I Yeah, I, I don't hold any hope for that, but it'll be interesting to see it nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Um, the anime trilogy will be worth it if Ghidorah dies by Link. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, uh, but yeah, if you want to know the final results, Shin is your probably your answer. Shin is probably going to make it in. I need him. I'm not going to lie. I still have. Uh, I still need matches with for Shin, but something tells me Kaiju X might be able. Kaiju X might have something uh coming up or we might have something coming up a long way Maybe. also <laughs> will this affect 211 no mm. 211 very much like with all orga matches is orga absorbs monster dna right. um and plus it is not it is not shin is not involved shin is a and it also uses the lower versions of shin which was intentional mm -hmm. right uh, i mean not only that not only was it the lesser version of shin that was used, which, again, we're not going to be adding to the KWC, but in addition, like, 
I think I'm not sure if this has happened where a monster that will appear in the KWC appeared in the KWC as a cameo, basically. Not sure if we had that quite happen with anyone, but it won't count since they were not officially part of that match. And this is exactly why I had in the, uh, this is this is me future proofing for like future Tyler when he when 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 past Tyler was like, uh, okay, just in case Shin does get in. I'm not gonna have him be a combatant in any way, shape, or form, and this and I and I intentionally stress that. Mm-hmm. So, apologies, Andrew, in, in that regards, but this is why. Mm-hmm. But uh, now, future Tyler is breathing a sigh of relief because Everything if you want to use Shin, yeah, if you want to use Shin, Shin is not gonna have his lesser forms because we were not gonna because it's not something instantaneous. It's not something he can do immediately. It took time for him to go from three to final. Uh, so you cannot have him. Uh, so it's not something he can just do. He grows. It takes time. But he's adaptable, so, but I think that adaptability could re- lead to interesting results. Uh, I.e., uh, KWC number twenty-seven, Ultraman Orb versus Shin Godzilla. If that kind of adaptability is allowed for the KWC, then I think you could do some really crazy stuff with Shin without breaking character from Shin. For instance, if you want an idea for Shin, is like, uh, let's say Godzilla fires his atomic ray and you know blows Shin's right arm off. Okay, let's. I'm just. I'm just giving an example. Right. Uh, let's say he atomizes Shin's Great right shot. arm. What arm? And then <laughs> you're not wrong. Uh, but let's say that arm then regenerates, and there is a uh, that arm regenerates, and Godzilla fires his atomic ray again at the arm, and it does very little. That is an example of him adapting to something outside that's being used against him. Right. Uh, kind um, of a doomsday thing. Which I would thing. approve. Right. Kind of like a doomsday yeah. thing. Yeah. It, it, and for those that don't know doomsday, is doomsday cannot, cannot be killed the same way. Uh, which, and I think that's a good idea to use for Shin. He's a monster that a tactic is not going to use. <laughs> it's it's basically yeah it's it's a, a a a a monster that can basically if you don't beat him quickly he will adapt and encounter the moves that you used against him mm-hmm. um so like if if kiryu f's up the absolute zero cannon uh I, well maybe that's too extreme of a use right so that's ab- ad- that's the, like absolute zero is like completely atomizing so it's like eh, a little yeah there, it, there's like limit i uh, think of uh have you guys seen the x-men first days or first class yeah remember how remember how uh there there i think it's uh what i forget the, ca- the character's name but the mo- the guy that can adapt that's his whole like mutant power like he if he puts his head in water he grows gills hmm. um yeah yeah, yeah. Think of think of it like that for Shin. If something's going to kill Shin uh, instantly, like the Absolute Zero Cannon, there's no way he can adapt. But if there's something that he, that he can survive, aka like Dragon Ball, like Goku, then he'll get stronger and be more resilient to it after. Mm-hmm. Aka Genkai Boost. Also, the other requirement for that for Shin is that he has to have a toupee the whole time. <laughs> Dig blast it. <laughs> Prime Minister Shin will get in anyway. Uh, but yeah, like I said, great shot. Just look over the Ultraman Orb versus Shin Godzilla match. Basically, let me put it this way. If what happens in that match meets your approval, or if there's anything there, there that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's too bad. Um, I mean, uh, <laughs> no, just look over that match. As a good example of hold on, hold on, Andrew. Sorry, my button, my hand is over the fire, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> There's a button for oh. that. <laughs> Great shot! You do that, you're only gonna make Kaiju X join the Joe and Nakoda form shooting. <laughs> Can, uh, how about no? How about just no in general? But uh, no, it's um. Right uh can uh but yeah no in regards to uh in regards to that match um i uh i i again that's how i would like to introduce shin and i think that's yes shin is going to go if you want to write shin matches for the kwc go right ahead uh i honestly actually i think what i'm gonna probably have to do is update that kwc banner for the kwc in general Mm -hmm. uh like the one that we have for like maybe teasing some new uh Mm. Excuse me. A teasing future monsters, maybe getting rid of a few in the background. And add a few oh, more. right, right. Kind of like, you know, uh, cycling out some and saying, it's like, oh, instead of, like, you know... 
I'm, you know, I'm just pulling out of my arse here, like, replace Ultra 7 with Mirror Man or something like that. Not that we'd add Mirror Man. Nobody really cares about Mirror Man. So it's like, I'm just saying him as an example. Mirror Man? Yeah, Mirror Man. Yeah, but the idea would be, like, removing, maybe adding, like, uh, the show of Mechagodzilla in there. Replacing, like, Mechagodzilla. Right, replacing Mechagodzilla 2 like... with Mechagodzilla show. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, update, update, update it for maybe throw in, like, a few more, like, uh, Ebra for Gamines. Or, like, Maguma for, like, a few others. Like, that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, back to the actual results for the survey. So, next up, we had, uh, we had monsters that, uh... Uh, which which monsters do you prefer to read about in the KWC? Select your top ten. And I do this again because I want to see which monsters uh, people enjoy reading about. And I wanted to see those that people don't like reading about. And this one is a giant list. This is the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Perfect. The top 25 monsters people enjoy reading about out of a roster of 80. So, oh boy. Oh boy, this here is, we go. So, for, uh, I guess, for to make it easy, uh, number one, we have Godzilla Hesai. We at the top. Yep. That with 50%, and this is going down. So, at 50%, we have Godzilla Hesai. Godzilla Legendary is next at uh, 48. Anguirus is third at 40. Grand King Ghidorah is fourth at 31. Bagan's fifth at 30. Zilla is sixth at 27%. Gorosaurus oh, <laughs> Gore is seventh at 27. Ultraman is eighth at 26. Violante is ninth at 25. Gamera is 10th at 25. King Ghidorah Hesai, which surprised me, is 11th at 22. Wow. Distro- Destroy is 12th at 22. Space Godzilla is 13th at 21. Gigan is 14th at 20. Mechagodzilla is 15th at 20. Showa. Uh, Showa, Showa, uh, yeah. Uh, Kiryu is 16th at 19%. Zone Fighter is 17th at eight, uh, 17th place at 18%. Jet Jaguar is 19 at 18%. Wow, people Can actually you... read Jet Jaguar matches. <laughs> yeah. Jet Jaguar now. Uh, I think I missed one or screwed up the numbers, but I'm just going to continue. Wait, gotcha. uh, no, no, keep going, keep going. 4, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19. Uh, so King Kong is 19th, actually, sorry. Uh, at, is the 19th most at 18%. Rodan is uh, the 20th at 17%. Monster X is the 21st at 17%. Ultra 7 is the uh, 22nd at 16.5%. Titanosaurus is the 23rd at 16.5%. Mechaza Hesai is uh, at 24 with 16%. And Mothra Hesai is at 16%, or sorry, 15.5% and at 25th place. And I should note, this is a total vote. So, like, 16% of all those that participate in the survey chose Mothra Hesai. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of shocked Ultra 7's actually in this list at all for only having appeared in one match. I think people, yeah, I think people, again, that is, uh, I think people enjoy the Ultra Men. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you'll, make, you'll just probably keep a notice that there is no, you don't see the, uh, Gamora. Right. You don't see, you don't see the right. other Ultra Kaiju up here, just Ultraman, you, you see, and Ultra 7, yeah. Zone Fighter. Uh, Rachel, Gamora's from Marvel. Not that one. Take a he said Gamora, <laughs> not Gomora. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Gomora. And you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, otherwise, uh, those are the monsters you prefer. And honestly, uh, I was surprised by Gore. Go- I think the surprises for me is King Ghidorah Hesai, Gorosaurus, uh, Zilla. I think Zilla was probably one of the biggest shocks being in the top six. Honestly, uh, that was- Zilla and Gorosaurus don't surprise me, but King Ghidorah Hesai being up there is actually kind of a surprise to me as well. King- yeah, King Ghidorah surprises me. Gorosaurus not so much if you look at Kaiju's channel, which is most viewed videos. Oh, yeah, like most Gorosaurus matches are the most viewed videos of our committee read stuff for whatever reason. Overall, it's his most viewed stuff. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Like, th- those have, like, over a thousand views at this point. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Cool. Um, 
but yeah, no. Otherwise, uh, pretty much what you would expect in the top in the top list. Now we're going to the other side of the coin, uh, which is the top ten monsters people don't enjoy reading about uh, or don't like seeing in the KBC. And this is, and I and I read this because like this helps me give an idea of which monsters am I going to be uh, po- have the possibility of retiring. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. So we have twenty. Oh wait, let me slip. Move you it down. said ten. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Okay, we got them all. Right. So it's I generally hate doing the which ones do you not like reading the least because it's like it's what you do with the monster so me it's hard for me to really vote so i just kind of i just kind of think a certain way and then just be like oh okay yeah but it, it also gives an idea of like right right it maybe is it a bad interpretation because maybe the writer does maybe we've had bad matches with the monster is it that the monster is just generally unappealing to be read about because there is that like i will like for me I'm not the biggest fan of Ultraman. So, like, reading an Ultraman match is not, like, my top priority. I'd rather read, like you said, a Gorosaurus match. I'd like that monster way more than Ultraman. Right, right. But that's just, my, that's just me. I think everyone has their own personal bias and, and or personal choice and bias against certain monsters. But for here... Uh, so we have women... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing because we have... I'm seeing, okay, at least, like, two monsters in this list that were in the previous list. <laughs> Uh, okay, but but it is a separate thing, so, you know. Yeah, some monsters are just very polarized in general. So, let's start out with, uh, number one, with 41% of the vote, we have Black Moth. Ow. Uh, number two, we have Gororin with 37% of the vote. Number three, we have Spyler with 37% of the vote. Number four, we have Jakiro with 37% of the vote. Number four, or number five, we have Colossal Titan with, uh, number five with 35, uh, 6% of the vote. At number seven, we have Daigoro with 35% of the vote. Number eight, we have Wargilgar with 35, uh, 34% of the vote. Number nine, we have uh, Rogue Titan with 31% of the vote. Number 10, we have Zandora with 30% of the vote. Yeah. Number 11, we have Benular with 28% of the vote. I'm sorry, what'd you say? That, that was, that's all the zone title monsters, right? Pretty much. Uh... Number, uh, what is this? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, eleven. We have Godzilla Saurus with uh, forty or sorry, uh, twenty six percent of the vote. Uh, number twelve. We have Goliath with twenty six percent of the vote. Number, uh, number thirteen. We have Big. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> number fourteen. We have Gabbro with twenty one percent of the vote. At 15, we have C-Rex with 21% of the vote. Or, sorry, 20, 20.5% of the vote. Uh, at uh, 16, we have Maguma with 20.5% uh, of the vote. At, uh, what number are we at? 16? 16, I think. I, I, I'm losing track. Well, I'm doing this too many times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. Yes. Uh, C-Rex is 15 with 20.5 maguma is 16 with 20.5 17 is frankenstein with 20.5 18 is ganimes with uh 17.6 uh uh 19 is obsidious with uh 17 percent uh 20 is crystalac with 17 percent 21 is dagora with 15.8 percent uh 21 is monster x with 15.8 percent uh, 22 is Gazora with 14%. Then it's it's Anagami, and then it's uh, with uh, 13%, and then it's Cyber Godzilla with uh, 13%. And I, I know I screwed up somewhere in there, so I'm I'm just stopping. But that's your top list. Kaiju X will show it to you. You can look at it in general. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. If you if you're gonna be on the more, let's be serious with retiring here. I think things tend to dip off. I'd say after Goliath. Like, that's where things are kind of... St- they're not too high, so I'm not worried. Like, basically, everyone from Bag and Below, I think, should be, like, you know, let's consider them safe. Great, Godzilla Source has been retired, so... Yeah. No worries there at this point. I would tend to agree with that. But it is kind of like, you know, looking at it from Goliath going up, it is kind of like... Some of them are still new, like Rogue Titan, Colossal Titan, so we'll give them more time just to be here. But other monsters, like Spyler, like Black Moth, I'm a little disappointed because I felt like I had fun writing her matches. 
Spyler is one for concern. Or at the very least, it would be one I would put on priority to retire because he is a very, he is a creature of very limited, Useless. very limited use. I can tell you that from writing uh, the Godzilla Source Godzilla Junior match, he is very limiting. Uh, so it's like there's not really much you can do with them. But yeah, funny enough, a lot of the guys from Goliath on up are kind of like you know Zone Fighter and Ultraman monsters that people just. Just, just don't really care much for. So, or just... yeah, and those, and those would be the ones. If you want my full honesty, I would retire. Uh, in regards to those that I'm th- uh, considering about, and maybe in the ca- maybe in the survey, the next one, I'll probably put like in a who do you would you want to retire? Mm-hmm. Um, it would be bet- it's between it probably be a pair, and it would be between uh, t- Goliath and uh, Daigoro together, removing those two. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, uh, also, it would be removing uh, the Zone Fighter monsters. So it'd be either uh, Jakiro. I'd say. Or, I'd say keep. Jikiro. I say keep Jakiro. Retire the others. So actually, keep Jakiro and Zandola. Okay. I feel those two are actually unique. Mm-hmm. I'd say get rid of the other two. Right, right. I think uh, like uh, War Guild Guards uh, Spyler had their time to shine. People clearly don't like reading about it, like reading about him much, so yeah, I think we can get we can afford to lose uh, Spyler and Walgilgar. For it's funny because those two are synonymous with being the first Zone Fighter monsters to fight Godzilla. Yet are the ones that people just don't care about reading. So that is kind of funny, but yeah, Zandora. I yeah, I'd say Zandora and Jikiro should stay at least as for the time being. Uh, if there are monsters that I can assure you are not going to be on this list, like that are in the cross, Gororin and the Titans are not in my crosshairs whatsoever. Right, Gororin right. is Gororin is just unique enough, and I actually kind of enjoy, uh, and I actually think that kind of like Black Moth, it, it's more so people just don't like where the monster came from more so than the monster itself. Yeah. Uh, whereas Spyler and Jakiro, I can understand that. Yeah, it, it's. Yeah, those those monsters uh, are probably lesser. If you want to know who's my in my primary cost, the Gyro, it's Daigoro and Goliath. Uh, Goliath. Those two, I am prepping the shotgun as, as I speak. And when I retire someone next, it's not going to be a prolonged, very sad uh, thing. It's going to be cool. shotgun boom. Mm-hmm. It's they're going to be out very quickly. Right, right. So I'm not. I am not going to be planning to make any announcements for. Oh. Please, can you get these monsters in? It's like, no, at this point, if it, they're going to be retired, we're going to put the bullet to the head and pull the trigger. So, yep. Because uh, yeah, it's Goliath and Digro, especially, have had plenty of time to have matches written for them. Plenty. There's no excuses for those two at this point. They have had their chance. But then the fact that Digro only ever has three. Maybe upcoming four. And Goliath is basically on an all-loss streak. Uh, kinda. Or at least, uh, currently, as of this video, it was on an all-loss streak. It's like, yeah, I'd rather have a Goliath get a win in before he's retired, but yeah, well, it's like, yeah, he is... I don't think he was that, like, super... Like, he's neat, but he's not super unique. Uh, like, honestly... We have... He's a, he's a space Gabra, essentially. Essential, like yeah, he's just kind of a space Gabra is the best, like oversimplification, but he, he's just super basic, and there's nothing, no harm in that, but he doesn't really offer too much himself. I think even yeah. Joe pointed out himself. I think even Joe said he loses the same way all the time. Basically, hmm. So it's like, it's not much diversity being brought along with Goliath. So yeah, I'm kind of in, fa- like, to be perfectly frank, I am in favor with Greyshot's decision of p- putting the crosshairs in Goliath and Daigoro. It's like, I, 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 I've I watched the movie. I think, the, I think, you, like, you know, it's like there's a certain sentimentality. And I think Goliath does, I think there is a little more to Goliath because his meteor does bring in like a snowstorm or something, which I don't think has ever been utilized. But it is just kind of like, yeah, he's just underutilized, and people just don't use him. So, those are pro. We're not going to say that they're guaranteed to be next, but they're most likely to be next. 
Okay. Yeah, then that, that's exactly my results as well. I would say those two are probably up in the crosshairs, and especially Spider Man. Um, Femular, Gamora, obviously or not. Actually, the, you know the one I was most with? Camobus. I expected, uh, or Camobus, however you want to say, I expected him to be in the crosshair hair uh at uh, way higher up on the list mm. especially him and gaminas not even close mm. nowhere near the top right. well to be fair they we just had a month celebrating them and i think people are just granted ganimus is in the list but he's not on the higher upper echelon of we don't want to read him i think people have just been waiting for a ganimus smash for a long time and you know it's like oh i want to write matches with camibus i want to write matches with ganimus I think people... Yeah, it, it's like the Gargantuas. They're they're kind of a pair. Mm. If you want to know the one monster below the... Uh, like, Big Hand that I probably do have in my crosshairs, like, a little bit, would be Frankenstein. I think out of all the... Uh, like the... Out of all the combatants, he might be the one that I uh, let go of. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I think that's... Like, I don't think... Fra like, Frankenstein I can get because his role can basically be supplanted with Santa. Though hopefully I think 220 should teach something about you can, like hopefully I think 220 can teach a good example of you can make Santa and Frankenstein different, but nine times out of ten Frankenstein and Santa basically fill in the same part. Yeah. So and I think Frankenstein, yeah. all things considered, had a good ha has a good run. Like he's hasn't been in every last thing, and sure it may have taken taken him a while after we took reigns. But I think there is enough there. Uh, like, like he, I think he clearly has enough of a, like, you know, win-loss draw ratio. Where it's like, you know, he still had varied matches for all the appearances he's been in. So it's like, yeah, I don't think... I do not think retiring him would be of any real substantial loss or that anyone would be angry over. Like I said, we have Sanda who goes well with Gyra. So... And I think it also would help for Sanda, who I think is also... Right. Uh, but that's just me. Right, absolutely. I think it would ultimately really help Sanda a lot by getting rid of Frankenstein. So it's like, yeah, like I said, it's not that we'll absolutely... Well, already said, like, he's kind... Frankenstein's kind of on the crosshairs, but I think he's one that can take the bullet. Yeah. So, um, uh, do you guys have anything to say about in general, uh, Nagoda or GBJ? Monsters you were surprised? I, again, I will make note of, if you want to know the least, the monster everyone did not choose the least of, uh, here's the, like, the top five. Oop. I guess top ten, whatever you want to say. Like, here are the monsters that nobody chose. Basically the middlemen. Yep. These are the monsters. No, not even that. It's these are the uh, every if they that they people don't care for or like don't want out of the KWC. In essence, like they didn't really feel strongly, which I was kind of surprised King Caesar was so low. But poor Titanosaurus. <laughs> he's probably he, at least he's on the list for the top most. Uh, he did get a few votes, which you know I was kind of happy for, but. Uh, no one, uh, like, these monsters, people just don't, uh, people, uh, I think they, they don't care I'd for I'd say, uh, I'd say, uh, yeah, they're more, like, you know, neutral. It's like, they don't mind that they're there, they don't mind that they're not. So, it's like, yeah, yeah I don't think there's any real issue with that. Yep. Hey, the, uh, hey, I gotta go. There might be a chance I might return, but in case I don't, I'll... See you guys later. I'll sign off for this episode. Okay, gotcha. So, right, see you guys later. All right, see you, man. Later, man. Bye. Okay, so now the final three questions, which were, uh, please list the monsters or monsters you would like to see in a KWC match in the final months of 2018. Uh, we had a pretty good split. I'm using a word ta a word cloud generator, which basically just takes the most popular words. So, there is a if you notice a word repeated a lot, like for instance Godzilla. That is why. Um, but these were the ones that people wanted to see by the end of the year, which we have Space Godzilla. Ba I mean, the, uh, probably the biggest ones is King Ghidorah, Godzilla, Gamera, and Fagan. People wanted to see these monsters and Shin Godzilla. 
Shin and Legendary Godzilla are like the big ones. Mm. Uh, versus was also in there. Uh, but yeah, uh, we all did some others like Ultra 7, Kiryu, Space Godzilla, uh, Megagirus, which I can say I'll, I will try to ensure these monsters are thrown in, or at least the ones that are most chosen are thrown in. And I think I have just the match to satiate from uh, these for most people. Awesome. Also, Zilla. Zilla was also a big contender. So that was awesome to see. All right. Uh, but next up, so do you have any monsters you want to see added to the KWC roster? And here are the results. There we go. All right. Ooh, Armor Titan's actually pretty big. Despite... Yeah, Armor Titan got about uh, about 10%. I, w- so I if wonder you who to... voted good on. <laughs> Ghost Godzilla got a little bit higher than him. Uh, Godzilla Earth, uh, Shin Godzilla had I think the most. Oh, yeah. No, Godzilla was just the number one overall. Uh, I like, think the biggest one I see is Godzilla Showa or someone Showa. Probably Godzilla Showa. Actually, Shin beats that size. It, really? It, it, it's like yeah, Shin is about twenty, whereas Showa is only ten. Dang! Wow. Keep in mind, ignore the, the the technically the biggest one is the big Godzilla you see in the uh, the bottom left, but that's because it's taking into account every Godzilla shown, so mm-hmm. that's why. Otherwise, oh, that's Godzilla, true. Uh, uh, otherwise there's not really clarity, but Go- but Gora is also probably uh, Zedon is in there. I don't know what Gia Gia Rumu is. Oh, Gia Rumu, he's from Godzilla Trading Battle. He's one of the Trading Battle monsters. Ah, uh, okay, but Bagora is pretty high up there. All right, oh that's cool. That's cool. Ah, uh, Zeton. I'm sorry, buddy. We can't bring Zeton Golly for you. I'm sorry. Which, again, if I were to have, uh, uh, you know, if I were to add a monster in regards to, like, the cutting room, or, like, or in regards to, not the cutting room, but the, the comics, like, that would be another cool addition. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Would be, like, Bagora. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, if we could get him in, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, otherwise, that would be, um, hmm. Uh... You know, that'd be something we can think about. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, otherwise, t- 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 let's see what else. Uh, yes, the final, the final one, which was, uh, do you have any recommendations uh, or changes or critiques? And going through the entire list, there are a lot. Ooh. There were a lot of people that added things. So let me go down to the bottom, and I'll just go up from the top. Let's see how many of them uh, said Matt Frank. <laughs> Uh, well, these are recommendations, changes, or critiques. Uh, more Zilla losing. Uh, <laughs> I wonder who put that one in. <laughs> I wonder. Uh, actually, no, that was not who you'd probably think it is. Oh. Uh, focus on matches that were written more recently, 2015 and beyond. Uh, that I can't say we are doing. I've gone through most of the back catalog, so which we should be seeing now is more new matches, especially with the... Uh, I've had I've been especially with the higher rate we've been releasing matches about three a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are getting through a lot of the older matches and we're now on the newer ones, oh, which cool. is easier for me. So yeah, awesome. That's actually really great to hear. Actually, so yeah, we have like a few, but like for the most part, I'm be focusing on the. So there is I will say that. Uh, n- no, but as a joke answer, I recommend Kaiju send you my matches. <laughs> uh, I'll, you know what? I'll yell at him some more. Let's see what we can do. Uh. <laughs> Other uh, people said the option to have alternate banners. Matt received banners and are good quality, then people can pick which one they like so no banners go to waste. Uh, this and idea I like. I like the idea, but like, do we, would that basically just relegate it to we vote for, like, w- would that be something in the community that would be left in the hands of the community? Would that be something you would have to post to TK? It's like, oh, what banner do you want for the next match? Which I feel like would be huge spoilers. I've, um, I think the idea would be better would be, like, a gift banner that goes between the two. Okay, gift banner between the two? I think that's fair. I think that would be the probably the best of both worlds, which is you get the... The the, the one on top is the banner, obviously, it's better, but you can go through all the different ones. Um, hmm. But yeah, otherwise, uh, we have uh, uh, open up restrictions a bit. The constrictive nature of the sections lead many people, myself included, to not want to submit anything because of the strict guidelines. And as someone interested in making banners, the strict requirements for specific incarnations limits creative potential to the lack of images for someone like uh, King Caesar Godzilla Final Wars. Um, makes sense. 
And this is why why we've uh, opened up some restrictions. For instance, Gigan, who can now be any incarnation of Gigan. Mm-hmm. So something we're considering. We're looking at uh, for a few monsters. Uh, and yeah, we will definitely keep that in mind. King Caesar is definitely the one that I will say uh, is probably the next on our list of looking at that. Mm-hmm. Um, but we need to... It's probably a discussion I need to have with Anthony as to how do we want to treat this. Because I, I actually honestly would agree with King Caesar... Probably can be treated like Gigan because there was a note that said they are the same creature. Hmm. So, right. I mean, if that's the case, then I wouldn't mind mixing it. But we have to find and see if there's any press, uh, like precedence to that first. Because at least Gigan yeah. was like, you know, it was influenced from an official source, which was IDW. Yep. Well, which you had the comics, which had old Gigan turned. Into- right. Old Gigan turned to new guy. Old Gigan turned to new Gigan within the span of like the. It wasn't something that was like, oh, it was old Gigan and Godzilla the ongoing into new Gigan into rulers. No, old Gigan was seen in rulers, then he was upgraded to new Gigan in rulers. So it's like in the same story arc. Uh, yep. Couldn't say it better myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, uh, some other, let's see, some other feedback. Make author names easier to find, like having a subsection that says on the main page who wrote the match. I love this idea for the main site. Um, and this is something that, uh, uh maybe I think it would be uh-huh, right. really cool, to, really cool to speak about in the future. But that is something that, uh, I do really like the idea about, which is having an author section, which connects to everyone. Right, right. Maybe we could maybe have a section that's like, oh, divided by author. It's like, you know, who wrote what, who wrote what. Maybe even have section divided by banner artist, maybe? Don't know. Yeah, we could that is definitely something and uh like these ideas I love. I love that. Uh I again the next one is add an author's page. Mm-hmm. That okay, is yeah, it's a great page. idea. Authors I like the idea of the author's page where it's like, you know, okay, here's the matches every writer has ever written, top to bottom. You know, th- these are all the matches they have written. Probably, it'd probably be best in alphabetical order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure, it is sure. in the design, and it would be a list. But yeah, I, 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 I love that idea, and it would probably be like in chronological order, matches, and just a link. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, what about in the case it, of co-op matches? I guess that sh- no, co-op matches should be their own section listed in chronological. Well, well it, co-op, you could just have two links. You could have a link in like if there's two writers like you and Harley. They have like maybe oh, we could okay, have like okay. pictures. Okay, right, right. So maybe like uh like oh under my list uh like the match I co wrote is there, but under your list you know two eleven two eleven will be under my list and your list because we both worked on it. exactly we both worked fair on enough, it. exactly. Uh, which honestly that might be very interesting to do. Which is we can have like a actually if upon thinking about this again this is just open discussion we could have something like uh the site staff where we have the image. And then we have the writer detail about the writer, and then like what like maybe maybe you'd have to write a certain amount of matches to be on that list. Oh yeah, for sure. Like you'd ha- you'd have to get up to like five. maybe five or ten matches. I- I'd say five but... matches. Five matches would be a good like minimum. Yeah, but I think that'd be very cool, and maybe uh, bio or something. All oh, right. That would be. I'm liking this idea. If you guys are listening, keep an eye out for that. I think that'd be that's probably going to go where uh, someplace. Right. I think uh, I, I could realistically, like, as long as we can have another, like, if we could add two sections at once, we can have them under the combatant statistics and FAQ. That would be cool. Yeah, I like that. I can hear you guys now. Oh, that's good. <laughs> We've been just rambling Sweet. on. <laughs> You'll have to listen to the podcast version because I'm not repeating myself. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, uh, Grisha, my, my joke answer was the... the... Say, ask Grace, not Grace, ask Kajak to send you my matches. That was mine. <laughs> <laughs> that one I figured as much. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, going up the list, uh, uh, we have like in compliments, like it's going pretty good. Uh, going fantastically. Actually, I wish matches would go up slightly frequently. Writers are great, banners creative, and inclusion of newly discovered or unused moves for old monsters keeps things interesting. Oh, yeah, that I agree uh, with. That I agree with. We also have some you like know Gigan I, was a ninja, apparently. <laughs> I'm not surprised, but I think Assassin would be better because of the cyborg nature. But that's just me. Uh, I think match 164 should be moved from. Yeah, true. Uh, I think uh, 164 should be moved from existence. <laughs> uh, duly noted. 
Uh, will Kaiju X ever send you my matches? Will Prime Minister Shin ever enact his plans? <laughs> Find out in the next KWCC. <laughs> yeah. That was mine. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh. Again, I, I I like the jokey ones, but I also struck them like this one actually. I think the roster is getting too bloated. I don't mean that to say I don't mean that to say trim the fat. I just mean that the roster shouldn't have too many more combatants, especially because there are still way too many monsters already, which are overlooked in favor of monsters we already use mm-hmm. to uh, already seek to cram in every new product anyway. Also, and I'm, I'm aware this sounds contradictory, but don't retire Hesai Ghidorah, please. Uh, gee, I wonder who could have wrote this. I think hmm. that might have been Harley. I, uh, uh, Harley or someone else. I forget. I honestly was, I honestly would have, my gut would have been, honestly, it was either you or Harley, but I, uh, Harley makes the most sense. But no, I, 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 I King of Dark Hesai is not in my crosshairs, um, yet. Uh, depends on how awesome King of the Monsters Ghidorah is. Right. Uh, but who knows? Maybe there's a world where they could exist together in harmony. I don't see that being a real possibility, unfortunately. Maybe it's just I'm a cynic. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Uh, try to give equal focus to all kaiju instead of the popular one. Uh, I feel there are too many kaiju used far too often. Any kaiju with 10 matches or should be given a break while unt- until others can catch up. Um, I like the idea about these, but sometimes people just write matches. Like, I don't have, right, you, like, some... You don't... There's some mat- monsters. I just don't have a match. For. Right, right. People just don't write them. Absolutely. Like, people say, let's have a match with this monster. We never actually get matches with that monster, though. That's the important part. If we don't get matches with that monster, we can't fulfill that duty. So it's hard to say. Yep. And plus, people who aren't familiar with the community, like the uh, KWC community aren't going to know any, aren't really going to know much better and just be like, oh, I want to write with Godzilla. I mean, it's cool if you want to write with Godzilla, don't get me wrong. But I am also saying it's like, like, you know, that's to be expected because that's what people outside of KWC want to write. It's like, oh, Godzilla, Ghidorah, Mothra, so on, so on. Yep. And I would would completely agree with that. Uh, And so there's also a lag. Some people just go... Uh, in different strategies mm-hmm. or different uh, directions with uh, monsters in regards to, like, for instance, Zilla used to be not used at all. And then after Tom wrote his match, there was a little bit of a lag, and then there was a large amount of Zilla matches that were posted. Yep. Or or for other monsters, you see this, like, span where there's none, and then there's all of a sudden there's a ton of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think that's just the case for some monsters. Some have a, uh, some monsters have a slow burn and some have a big, you know, like span of matches. Like, I mean, uh, Godzilla Saurus, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that, I think that will change. Uh, I think that, I think that some monsters will just have streaks and some monsters will have walls. I think that's just going to happen naturally. That, yeah, that and is then, just going to happen naturally. There's not much we can do about that until it comes along. Godzilla Legendary is definitely, I will say this, in regards to with Godzilla I have in this popular, Godzilla Legendary, by far, is probably the most popular, is the Godzilla I have the most of it. Um, but, I mean... Again, that makes sense. His movie and whatnot mm-hmm. just came out. And then, so he has has a, and then he has a movie up and coming, too. So, Yeah, people want to probably use him a lot more. So, I, 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 think, that's the, I think that's the case. I think that's the, some monsters just have walls and pickups, and it, it just depends on the writer. Some mo- writers just don't like using other monsters, and yeah. I, I try to incorporate some other ones. That's why I incorporated, like... Cyber Godzilla and C Rex and Zone Fighter and Jet Jaguar in my matches, especially with my big upcoming long list. I mean, two hundred had like the spa- had like plenty of monsters. Yes, I use some of the bigger ones, but I also use like again Jet Jaguar, Crystal and Obsidious, like some lesser used. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I I think that there's a room for all those matches. It just depends on if I get. Otherwise, back to the survey itself um, in regards to others. Let's say, uh, no, running a tight ship for the most part. Uh, I had some, uh, let's see. Uh, 
More verifiers and editors, more matches a month. Uh, actually, we uh, have that, so we got you covered. Well, maybe not necessarily more verifiers. I feel like more verifiers would make things confusing. But we do have a structure where I hope processing matches should be a lot easier and editing matches should be a lot easier. Basically, the structure... Yeah. Like, unfortunately, uh, I, will, I mean, granted, yes, Harley and Birdman have been brought on as a new verifier and editor, respectively. However, uh, Spanish Bulldog and Dino Master will officially, like, you know, like, I mean, we, we kind of kind of said, it's like, you guys can go, you know, you, you guys are good now. If, if they had any matches, they'd send them to them, which last I heard, they didn't get any. So it's like, yeah, okay. But, uh, yeah, basically, it's going to be... It's going to be layered like this. You have one editor and one verifier. So the verifier sends to the editor and the editor sends to Grayshot. So, and we got two sets of that. So we have Alex who's paired with me. So Alex sends matches he verifies to me. Harley will send matches she verifies to Birdman. We both, Birdman and I edit our respective matches... And then we both send them to Grayshot when they're ready. Yep. Yep, exactly. And uh, so you should see a more streamlined process. Next, post a match a week, a Monday Fright Night of sorts. I actually like this idea. And if we were able to uh, streamline this process, I want to get maybe one a week. That'd be kind of a, that'd be kind of like a godly goal, but that would be kind of awesome. Right, right. Be one a week? Yeah, that'd be crazy, but that'd be... Uh... Like, given the fact that all of them would need banners, but hopefully if some of them... I know some of the matches I still have have banners associated with them, so hopefully the uh, time to be like, oh, I need to find someone... I volunteer as tribute for banner making. Okay, Dakota. (laughs) You're our our sacrificial lamb. (laughs) Let's see. Other uh, comments, though, moving on. Team Up Battles, Battles... Uh, remove the realism rule for matchups. I like monsters in the roster. Uh, let's see. Wait, uh, continue. With, I I think that keep them like we have so many monsters that are like you have to be able to like use their actual image in the banner. Oh right. Oh right. Right. So basically, it's like oh, give us a reason to use like their cartoon pictures. I think whatever. I think that was after especially two twenty five. But I will stress that two twenty five it was a special situation. Um, I'm looking to do another 225 kind of, you know, maybe special banner thing, Mm -hmm. but that was a very, again, that was a comic book artist and that was a situation that is not so easily attainable. Mm -hmm. Right. Like our circumstances for like, you know, for those kind of banners are like, you know, they are from official Godzilla artists is the way we look at it. So it's like, you could be an incredibly talented artist if you are awesome you know that's great for you but the way we're looking at it is it's basically kind of like a celebrity highlight in a way where it's like look we have official arts from official godzilla artists on our page kind of thing so yeah it's 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 something very cool to have it's not something that can happen all the time. Right. It's um, not... But it is something I am striving to have again, uh-huh. I will say. Right. It's not going to happen all the time, and I don't think it's going to be a common occurrence. But when it does, you know, it's like, cool. It, it makes things spicy for banners. You know, it adds variety. Yep. Uh, otherwise, continuing on, we have some just minor comments. Keep as is, it's good. Just making, uh, Just keep making interesting stories. Uh, continue with the storyline that started with Match 137. I uh, can't say that will do. Mm-hmm. Uh, more video game, comic, and anime kaiju, please. If not Toa Kaiju able to get in, do throw in like Bazinger Monsters and Dragnosaurus. Uh, sadly, they have to be Toho related right. as a heads up. Mm-hmm. Um, my only recommendation is, is the KOC battles told stories instead of just the monsters fighting each other. I think that is definitely something KOC has approved upon and does do on occasion, is adding really interesting stories. Go look at 240, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, shorten or improve the pacing of some uh, some of them. I mean, every writer's different, so there, that is that. Right. And, uh, and just some of the matches are just going to have to be long because of specific circumstances. So Yep. Uh, we have some that say, no, it's fine the way it is. Uh, they can be extremely long to read, but still entertaining. Mm-hmm. Not enough matches a month, more KWC staff, more banner artists need uh, dope Pope banner. Uh, 
I think Dope Pope is an awesome person. I don't think a banner. Uh, I don't think he. I don't think we would could afford him making an awesome three D model with like a hundred monsters. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, right, but we, we have. We he, I mean, we have commissioned him. He was the one that made the trilopods. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have like for the trilopods, which by the way are fantastic. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> he is he is someone. Let's just say we are definitely a keen on when if we it's about getting that th- realism rule uh you know getting around that realism uh rule. him or uh freaking uh digi whip who made the super godzilla model mm, yes beautiful. another yep uh otherwise other comments uh keep up the good work uh just keep doing what you're doing uh scrap the kwc it's useless fanboy bullshit thanks <laughs> Well, I mean, given the amount of positive appraisal, I'm sorry. I, I'm a li- I'm inclined to disagree a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. Um, otherwise, actually, Kaiju X, I'm looking at the time. Um, there are a lot more comments, and I think I'll go over more of them next time. All oh, right, right. Uh, like comments that offer critical insight or comments that are just comments? Just comments in general, because there are a lot of comments through, and... Looking at the time, I do have to depart. All right. Well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, we practically hit the two-hour mark like 10 minutes ago anyway, so... Or like 20 minutes ago, but... Oh. Whatever. So it's like, yeah, you know, it's fine. It's fine. So it's, To be continued. In a way. Like, yeah, it needs... Like, the finalized results of the polls should be uh, ready by November. You know, we can continue on with the comments if we remember. Yep. Uh, and, and all that fun stuff. So in the meantime, we will see you guys... Next time for the next KWCC. Yes, see you guys next time. Where Shin, where Prime Minister Shin will finally enact his global plan of domination. Yes. Maybe.